Hello, and we are live from Lexington, South Carolina, the campus of River Bluff High School, the stadium they call the Swamp, where River Bluff High School will host the four-time defending state 5A football champion Dutch Fork Silver Foxes tonight in a game that has beautiful weather and a lot of excitement in the atmosphere. Welcome to the Sonic Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week. My name is Stacy Huff, joined, with, joined by former Clemson Tiger, former Houston Texan, former Washington football team, Leo Mont Evans, glad to have you with us, Leo, as well. And what a night for football. It's a great night for football. Another uh, 5A competition, region champion, I mean, a uh, region competition. Looking forward to a good game tonight. No doubt about it. It's a good, good weather. Hope the rain stays away. And right now, we want to talk about some of our South Carolina homegrown players by South Carolina Agritourism, key players of the game. We begin with Dutch Fork, our visiting team. Who are a couple of key players for Dutch Fork? Well, offensively, Dutch Fort fe features the quarterback, Will Taylor. This guy's um, had 535 yards this year, passing, eight touchdowns, and um, he's also a Clemson commit in baseball and football. So defensively, who does Dutch Fort have? Chris Wicker, linebacker. He's the leader of this team on defense. He has 20 tackles, two for loss, one sack, and two passes broken up. So for River Bluff, our host team tonight, who are a couple of their key players if they're going to have a victory tonight? River Bluff features uh, Kendall Long, a great wide receiver. He was all-region player last year. He had 10 touchdowns and 35 receptions. This kid is already an early commit to Santa Cruz University. How about on the other side? The Adam linebacker. Molinari, linebacker. You know, he's a, he's a great guy. He, he started three years for him, and I think this guy's going to pick up where he left off last year. There are some of our key players brought to you by SC Agritourism. Now, for our Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union, keys to the game. Both teams come in with a plan, and they have to execute those plans with those players you're talking about. But let's talk about those keys for each team. Begin with our visitors, the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, Leo. Offensively, you know, Dutch Fork has got to play to their potential. This team has came out and averaged about 60 points a game, and they need to uh, continue this and uh, have another great season. Defensively, they, the defense needs to set the tone for the game early. They need to come in there and get these guys off the field in three plays. Okay, for River Bluff, where are their keys to the football game tonight? Offensively, River Bluff needs to first protect the football, not, not turn the football over, not give these guys an advantage in this game, and just uh, make some plays. But defensively, they need to do the opposite, and that's create turnovers on defense. So, um, it, uh, they're going to gonna create turnovers. Leo Mont Evans, former Clemson Tiger, former Houston, Texas, former Washington football team player. My name is Stacy Huff. We are glad to have you with us tonight. A beautiful night for region play in the Midlands of South Carolina. We're set for kickoff coming next, live from the swamp on the Sonic. Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week. <laughs> Welcome back into the Sonic Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week. We're in the swamp, the campus of River, River Bluff High School. Dutch Fork pays a visit. Let's look at the weather, our game day forecast. Dick Dyer game day conditions. Columbia Metro's number one Toyota dealer, Dick Dyer Toyota customers first, and the weather is cloudy, a little temperature of 72, the wind east at five miles per hour. I think they say easterly on TV. Brought to you by Dick Dyer, of course. Well, <laughs> let's talk about Tom Knotts. Let's meet him, the coach of Dutch Fork High School, a legend in North Carolina and now in South Carolina as well. 120, 21 and one in his 11th season here at Dutch Fork High School. 12 total state titles. Five of them in South Carolina had seven up in, at Independence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. 38 seasons total. He's a Wiley veteran, Duke, Duke alum, by the way. Let's look at Bear, Blair Harden, a Kannapolis, North Carolina native in his fourth season at River Bluff High School. 20 and 14 is his record. He is a Citadel man, played defensive back at the Citadel back in the day, Coach Harden. And uh, Coach's Corner brought to you by Blythewood Wildlife Removal each and every week. Thank you for that and that sponsorship of our Coach's Corner. Now time for our kickoff. Dutch Fork in their white, all white, top to bottom. It's after Labor Day, they're wearing white anyway. And then black is River Bluff, the home team. This is our Willingham and Sons building supply and septic tanks kickoff. Two men back to receive. Kicker for Dutch Fork is number three, Furkan Unladeskiran. Bet you can't say that. Furkan Unladeskiran, number three, is your kicker. And he approaches the ball, and we are underway on a region battle. River Bluff, Dutch Fork. Ball received at the 12-yard line. Decent return. Chuckle made by Trace Danley. Man, we'll call quite a bit. He and his brother, both on the team. That 
Return, I do believe, was about number nine for River Bluff. That was Thomas Powell, who's also a wide receiver. They'll take over at the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for River, for River Bluff. Leomon Evans, former Clemson Tiger. You Tiger fans are you should be happy tonight. And I'm a Gamecock in here with him. My name is Stacy Huff. Glad to have you with us. Our sixth game of our schedule this year, third South Carolina High School League game, public school game. Quarterback for River Bluff, multi-year starter, Jackson Stone. Two men in the backfield with him. He's going to give one of the backs. That was a strong run and a game tackle by a host of Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. That carry was number four, Raleigh Myers. Let's look at our Atkins Low Firm starting lineup. We began first with the River Bluff offense. Jackson Stone, we mentioned Preston Sansoni, the running back, Thomas Powell, number nine. Kendall Long, the wide receiver we talked about. Huddle is the wide receiver. Molnar, linebacker, also plays tight end. The line, Dow, Gould, Shumpert, Derrick, and Albright for River Bluff offense. And we'll take a look at the Dutch Fork defense after this next play. Two men, like an old wing T formation, Leo Mon. We'll talk, we bring Leo Mon in here in just a moment. But two wide receivers set, two men behind Jackson Stone. A little misdirection play, and it was a miscommunication. After a five-yard gain on first down, they get Nada Nuka on the second down. Miscommunication in the backfield. Let's look at the Dutch Fork defense brought to you by Atkins Law Firm. Bats Moore Owusu, number 45. We'll, he'll call his name a lot. Cohen Chisholm at linebacker. Wicker we talked about. Perry, an outstanding sophomore. And Wise at linebacker. Defensive bats, Kennard, Stewart, Danley, and Danley. The Danley Law Firm. And in the secondary, one a sophomore, one a senior. We bring up now third down and five yards to go. Early in the first quarter, first drive of the game, River Bluff going right to left on your TV. Nice gain, a broken tackle. Still on his feet, that is Sansoni. Anthony Sansoni, the outstanding senior. Preston Sansoni, good job up front by the defensive line. What do you see here, Leo? I see the, um, these guys got in front of him, opened the hole up, and I mean, this guy just ran the ball like he was determined to get where he was going. Yeah, he had somewhere, he had an appointment somewhere. Wusu in the game, get, they tried to rip it out of the end, but not tackling the ball is not going to work. Sansoni behind a strong offensive line, good running. That's a love plumbing air electrical first down. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's a fall football uh, weather atmosphere we have here on the campus of River Bluff High School. They call it the Swamp. They are the Gators. And right past the Gator logo on the 40-yard line is River Bluff driving right to left on your screen. Uh, Four-time champion, Dutch Fork in white. Jackson Stone kept it that time, and that Dutch Fork deep team defense fast on the outside. He lost yardage, Leo. Oh, these guys got in the backfield pretty quick. I mean, this defense they have been playing like this all year. They just get out there. On this play right here, you know, he tried to outflank him, but he just couldn't get outside on him. And that was number 10, Jaden Kennard. Got to check if that's Kiner or the Kennard. Sometimes it's, it's a, it, it is, it depends upon the family, how they want it said. Six foot, 225, I'll check that. Jaden Kennard, nice job that time. And he had uh, some help as well with them. Too many white helmets on the play. Loss of three on the play. That's going to bring up second down and 13. One man in the backfield behind Jackson Stone to his left. He claps his hands, gets a snap. He's going to give. And big hit still behind the original line of scrimmage. He gained two on that. They'll mark it down at the... 41-yard line of Dutch Fork, but gain of two is still behind the sticks, third and 11. Those are some big bodies Dutch Fork got up front, so these guys are going to have to do a lot to move them out the way. Number 29, I mean, this guy is all over the field. That's Chandler Perry. I was told by a couple of coaches before the game. He's an outstanding sophomore. He's a name to look for. He, he brings some thump out there to number 29, only a 10th grader. Uh, Jackson Stone takes a look at the sideline. It's a passing down. Three wide receivers set, two on our near side line, one up top. Two men in the backfield behind Jackson Stone. He pitches. A bad pitch. This pitch to Sanson, and the ball bounced out of bounds. Nine yards behind the original line of scrimmage at, the, at midfield. Loss of nine on the play. It'll be fourth and 20. Punt time. They'll hold a fist in the air for River Bluff. Yeah, it's early in the game. You know, these guys haven't played this year, so they're going to have to find their rhythm. You know, the first two games were canceled, so, Great you know, that's that's just uh, something that comes with not having those reps. This opening night jitters, if you would. And the curtain goes up on the season for River Bluff three weeks in. COVID-related, uh, they were quarantined and had to postpone a couple of games. So this is a tough ask on their first night of the season to come up with the four-time defending champions. 
Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. And now it's punt time. And it was almost blocked. This may be Devin Hyatt. No, this is number eight. This is Williams on the on the kick return, on the punt return, excuse me, down to the 25 yard line. Looked like he had a little daylight at the time. Good job shutting it down. That's Antonio Williams, the junior wide receiver. Returns the ball up to the 25 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Dutch Fork right there. Silver Fox is taking the field for the first time. We're going to see what they're going to do with it. Will Taylor, you talked about him in the opener, Leo. Will Taylor transferred in from Ben Lippin. Going to your, your alma mater, Clemson, to play baseball and a little football as well. And this guy can swing it now. But great bat in the baseball field, by the way, too. I saw some clips of him hitting some towering home runs. But he has a cannon on his shoulder. One man in the backfield. He's going to drop back, looking deep. The first play, he throws it out. It's Elijah Spencer. Spencer breaks two tackles and knocked down just at midfield. Great job that time. Good throw, good catch. Elijah Spencer. Let's take a look at Dutch Fork offense real quick. Brought to you by Atkins Law Firm. Taylor, we talked about Jarvis Green, a sophomore running back. Griffin Reed, a tight end. Spencer, Antonio Williams, and Devin Hyatt, all three outstanding wide receivers. Al Khatib, Holloman, Ingo Murphy, and Benson, the starting offensive line. And now back to action. Taylor. Had a little time over the head of Antonio Williams. And we'll look at the River Bluff defense real quickly. Brought to you by Atkins Law Firm once again. River Bluff, dressed in black tonight. Joseph Scott, Coulter Davis, the D-line. Proctor Sensony, Molnar, we talked about. Coclasia, linebackers, Powell, West, Williams, and Herndon. Your secondary. We come now live to second and ten. Taylor's looking again. All passes thus far. Looks right. He has, looks like Hyatt. And he overthrew him a little bit. Good job defending that time. That was Devin Hyatt, the sophomore. He wears the seven. Now, his brother wore it for years. He was at Tennessee now, Jalen. Devin Hyatt, the younger brother. Take a look. Back here is, you know, they, they've done it three times, trying to go deep on him. The DB, you know, he's you like holding, he holds his ground. I love it. You like I the love, DB play, right? I love good defensive back play. You made a couple dollars playing defensive back. That's <laughs> Coach Tom Knox right there. Coach Tom Knox, 60-something years old, my guy. Still in shape. Absolutely. The dude, the dude's still in shape. I can tell he's hitting the weight room. Take a look right here. Third and ten. Fake give. Throw outside. That's a good play combination. They ran the defensive backs off and they threw it to the check down, man. That's Antonio Williams. And that's, a easy, that's too easy. Pitch and catch. Well, what they've been doing for the first three or four plays, they've been softening them up, making them go deep, and now they uh, run a stop. Nice catch right there, right inside the 50. And Absolutely. nobody, no black jersey touches him until about 15 yards down the field. That's a love plumbing air electrical first down. Leo Mike, your defensive back guy's got to tighten it up, man. Coming downhill now. Ball's on the 35 yard line of River Bluff. Taylor looks to the sideline. He has the talented sophomore, who's also an outstanding basketball player for Dutch Fork, Jarvis Green, in the backfield to his right. Taylor looks left, looks right. It's Antonio Williams. Williams catches and makes a man miss at the same time. You can't necessarily teach that. That's a gain of, looks like, about 14 on the play. So first down. Right here, you know, he just dropped back and the receiver stops in the hole. And right here, you just got to get him to the ground. They're doing a good job by uh, mixing it up as far as it passes. Molnar and Wyatt Proctor there on the tackle for River Bluff. Molnar's a man, gentleman we talked about in the Pre-game, and let's look at Antonio Williams. He's been active. He, he was the kick, He was the punt returner. He's caught two passes. Both his catches were for first downs. Taylor looks to the right. He has a man. It's Elijah Spencer catches with his hands, and he's going to put his head down across the goal line. Hit by three players. Way too easy. Touchdown. Elijah Spencer, touchdown, Dutch Fork. Strike up the Dutch Fork fight song, and it is a sonic touchdown. Leomont Evans. What did we see? Oh, man. I mean, first few drives, they've been... Driving him off the ball, this guy drops back, he's right in the hole, he makes the catch, and he fights his way to the end zone right here on this play. That's determination. Look at the hot dog. Don't make me hungry now. <laughs> Sonic in the house. It's the Sonic Friday Night Rivals. Game of the week. Kick is up and good. Let me get this name again. Number three, Furkan Onladeskiran with the extra point. Your score, Dutch Fork 7, River Bluff 0. Sonic Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week, Lexington, South Carolina. In a region battle, 5A football. Stay with us. Welcome back inside the party known as the FNR. Game of the week, Dutch Fork just scored on our opening possession 7-0 over the home team, River Bluff. And 
I want to tell you about our Scholar Athlete coming up at the halftime. Coming up at the DHEC Halftime Report, we'll introduce you to this week's Scholar Athletes presented by Crosby Roofing. Crosby Roofing, proud sponsor of the Scholar Athlete of the Week. Stacey Huff, Leomont Evans, and you. Sit back and relax. We're going to have some exciting fireworks. We've already had exciting plays with both teams with the ball. River Bluff had a big run that excited their home fans. And then Dutch Fort, like precision, Leo. I mean, they, they moved down the field. <laughs> like a uh, college football team. These guys are four-time champions, and they're not that for nothing. Absolutely. Look, at, They're hunting five. Tom Knox won seven. When he won one in North Carolina, he won seven. So he may be trying to do the same thing. It's the Willingham and Sons kickoff. Willingham and Sons building supply and septic tanks. It's a great night for football here in October. Third week of the South Carolina High School League schedule. River, Dutch Fort with a familiar swinging arms at the kickoff. Told me it's that the ball's going to be caught inside the 10-yard line and return. Big hit that time at the 27-yard line. I think that may have been our same guy to return the first one that time. That is number nine, Thomas Powell. Both his returns were pretty good. And that's where River Bluff would take over that second possession, Jackson Stone. And this team will come out trying to answer that first punch, Leo. Absolutely. They're going to have to do something on offense, get it going. They had a, a long run last uh, possession, so they can um, add on to that. Yeah, the offensive line did look good a couple of plays, but the strength of and speed of Dutch Fork showed up after they crossed midfield. They rallied, and that bad pitch did not help anything at all, but they had a little something cooking. Let's see if they can pick it up. Jackson Stone, number seven on your screen, one man beside him. He's going to pitch again, this time to the left side. Big hit. Big hit that time for Dutch Fork. That was Landon Dan Danley, one of the two Danley brothers. Take a look at this pitch, Leo. Right here is what you want from somebody from your secondary. Coming up and being physical at the point, you know, when they meet that running back uh, and letting them know, hey, I'm here. That was Raleigh Myers, uh, number four. He was he played big last year on our airwaves as well. And that's Danley. There's two Danley brothers on here. Auburn fans remember Stacy Danley, former running back at Auburn. He has two sons on his team. That's the, the young one right there. Well, that's the senior. That's a sophomore on the team as well. Trace Danley is the senior, and Landon is the sophomore, I do believe, number 12. Jackson Stone is going to keep that around the right side, hit hard on that right side. There's going to be a flag down, but the first man there on the stop is number 30, Ryan Stewart for Dutch Fork, and no gain on the play. Let's see what the flag is, Liam. It was That was the second and seventh play. There's a hold. My man got the black gloves on. I was like, I was a jewel thief. Yeah, he's got the black, got the black gloves on. He's, it is a hold on River Bluff. They do not need penalties. We talked about keys to the game. That's one we can add right there. You're trying to pull an upset. You cannot hurt yourself. They're going to do a little Michael Jackson moonwalk backwards right here. And for some reason, he's calling. Oh, he's signaling again, and it's declined. So they're not going to go backwards. So Coach Knott says, "No, we'll keep him right there. We'll take the down." It's third and seven now. So they got him in a passing situation. Three wide receivers set: two to the left, one to the right. One man in the backfield: Raleigh Myers, to the behind and to the left of Jackson Stone. Stone's number seven, a multi-year starter. He's a veteran. Takes a snap, looks right, and had a man crossing. That pass is intended, I do believe, for Kendall Long, his Syracuse commit wide receiver. That time defended by, I believe that was Jacob, I believe that was Kennard. On, on that play there, I mean, he had him. He had him, and he had time. Uh, the guy just couldn't bring it in. He was going to have to break a tackle that time because it was a little short of the sticks, but yeah, that was. They need any break they can get right now. They want to get this ball back to Dutch Fork so quickly. 6-11 playing. That's a fumble snap. You definitely don't want to give it to him right there. And he's going to be tackled. The punter's tackled at the 16-yard line. Two miscues handling the football has hurt River Bluff early in this ball game, Leo. Oh, absolutely. You can't uh, make mistakes like that on special teams. You know, a fumble, fumble snap on the play, and the whole team back there getting the guy. You know, these guys are playing real hard. 38. That was Christopher Wicker. We featured him in the pregame. Gets there first. And he made that play, one of his first big plays. So and out back comes Dutch Fork.
Back, look at back. Will Taylor has a man in the corner. He's throwing for and well defended that time. No penalty. Pass is that was intended for, for four, Jarvis, Green. Jarvis Green out of the backfield. So Will right, I do believe was out of the backfield. And well defended. I can get that Second defender's down, name that time. We get that man some love. It was well defended. We gotta get his name in a moment. But Will Taylor is touchdown hunting. Defense. I don't believe they ran the first possession, did they, Leo? Absolutely not. So fine, I'm so fine. I'm fine, I'm fine. Snap. And a give this time to Jarvis Green. I believe it was his first carry of the game. He gets down to the 15-yard line, number four. Green on the carry. And they're in the Popowski and Shirley red zone on the move. So to bring up third down. River Bluff has a chance to get him off the field here, Leomont. Big play. That's Big right. play early for the defense of River Bluff. Third and seven. Taylor has targets. And now Green is going to go out. He'll be in the form, he'll be in the route as well. Flushed out of the pocket. Taylor's going to run right, look right, trying to direct traffic. It's not going to be enough for the first down, but he was hit. Ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. It's, it's ruled incomplete that time. It was intended for Elijah Spencer. It's going to be field goal time for Dutch Fork unless they go for it. Now Coach Notch can. Mm. Yeah, that was ball, that ball did hit the ground. Absolutely. Defending on that play. It was um, looks like number 21 for River Bluff defending on the play. That was Wyatt Proctor. Fourth and seven. And it's going to be a field goal attempt. The holder is Will Taylor, the quarterback. Always a possibility of a trickeration when that happens. But I think they'll kick it. It's for Khan Umludis Garan. Hold is down. Field goal is up. And good. That was a 32-yard field goal. So that'll be the score of 10-0 here at the Swamp on the campus of River Bluff High School. Dutch Fork. Four-time defending champs up 10-0 on the homestanding Gators. Leomont Evans, Stacey Huff, and you. Back after this. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. So go vote! Sponsored by Jamie Harrison for Senate. The door to the American dream opens through education. Jamie Harrison is running to open those doors for all South Carolinians. Welcome back inside the broadcast of FNR Game of the Week, Dutch Fork 10, River Bluff 0. And coming up in the DHEC Halftime Report, we'll hear more about these two great schools in our Educator Spotlight, presented by Columbia International University. You don't want to miss that part of our standing DHEC Halftime Report. And it smells like teen spirit here in Lexington, South Carolina. Here we are now, entertain us, even if it's virtually, entertain us anyway. Kickoff coming up. It is our Willingham and Sons kickoff. Dutch Fork's third kickoff of the ball game. Willingham and Sons building supply and septic tank. Kicking off from the 40. They do the swinging arm routine before they kick off. It's a Dutch Fork thing. This kick, this kickoff here's going to go out of bounds. That's a flag. The ball will be placed, I do believe, at the I want to say the 35-yard line. We'll see if I have that right. But there's definitely a penalty. One out of bounds. 5-14 left to play in the first quarter. Dutch Fork out to the early 10-0 lead, Leomon. And I think this drive is big for River Bluff. Yeah, these Gators are going to need to um, do something coming out now. It's, it's um, now, you know, it's uh, almost all the end of the first quarter, so they got to get something going fast. Dutch Fork is a team who comes downhill at you real quick and put up 56 points, I believe it was, last week on Shaping. They put up that much or a little bit more the week before that, and we know they're prolific. You don't want to let it snowball, so a good counter punch right here might be needed. Three wide receiver set, Jackson Stone, the senior. One of our featured players last year when we did the game here, had a pretty solid showing. He's going to pitch again to the left, and it's a team meeting of Dutch Fork players, Danley, there as well, one of the Danley boys, Trace Danley, six foot 170. What happened here, Leo? This guy's, uh, they got him around the line of scrimmage. Um, 
Danley's making plays all night. You know, it's a free safety, and he's down there that close. So Yeah, he's there, and he had some guys. If he didn't make the tackle, he had some guys behind him there. And that carry was by Riley Myers, who gets a lot of work on that offensive backfield. Got a lot of carries last year in the game we did. But, yeah, Dan, we called Danley's name quite a bit. Though. As I mentioned, he has a brother on the team as well. They're both sons of former Auburn tailback Stacy Danley. Played in the NFL for a number of years. Two men. I got to get the name of that formation. Fake. Give, and it's going to be Kendall Long. The Syracuse commit gets a first down. Way to go up and catch it. Good throw, good catch. This kid, you know, like we were talking um, before the game, you know, Long is a great player. You know, he's already committed to the University of Syracuse. He's going to make some plays out there um, tonight. Yeah, he's 6'2", 215. I asked Coach Harden what was one of, you know, so many special things about him. What's one of his favorite attributes? He said the kid is so big and strong that, you know, when he catches the ball, he can break tackles as well. He goes up and gets it like he did right there. That's a love plumbing air electrical first down. Did you look at Kendall Long on your screen right there, number 11. He'll be headed up to upper New York after this season to play for the Syracuse football team. Midfield is the place to snap from. Roddy Myers goes around the left side. This time slammed down hard by linebacker number 44, Gabe Wise, a 5'10", 185-pound senior. Gabe Wise <laughs> made a great play because they were trying to block him that play, and he fought off the block and made that play. Yeah, you got to want to. That's that want to right there. It's going to bring up second down and five, 3.38 on the rolling clock. FNR game of the week here in Lexington. Beautiful stadium here on the campus of River Bluff High School. They call it the Swamp. You see the big gator on your screen when you see the wide shot right there. Snap. It's a give this time to Sansone. Sansone, excuse me. He gets hit by five, four or five white jerseys there. Among those in there, number 29, Chandler Perry. We talked about him. Also, Gay Wise there again. They just get to the ball. They have good team speed for Dutch Fork. Now under three minutes left in the first quarter. Third and four. Passing down here, Leo. What you think? Absolutely. I would. Gonna test, they're going to test this secondary. You know, Kevin Long has had success. Why not try him again? We'll see if they do it right here. And he's going to be stacked up with two other wide receivers right below us here on this side, near sideline. He's behind two receivers. And that's the way they go. They go to right there. He didn't catch it first. He would have had a hard time breaking that tackle. Dutch Fork seemed to know it was coming. It was defended that time by Jaden Kennard. And it's going to bring up fourth and four. Right here on this play, he just throws the, uh, the flare route, and the corner just stays home. They had three guys out there trying to uh, dress the uh, formation up. And he just didn't watch it in. Like, he didn't look that in that time. It's going to be punt time, and Antonio Williams, number eight, the junior wide receiver has had an active night early. He'll be set to he'll set to return this punt. Ball been snapped from the 43-yard line. He's going to try to field this around the 10. Good punt. That's how he angled away from Williams, and he fair caught that at the 19-yard line. So that's where Will Taylor and the Dutch Folk offense will take over. Settle for a field goal last time. The offenses looked really crisp at times for Dutch Fork. Ball spotted at the 19 yard line. First down and 10 for Dutch Fork. First quarter was moving kind of fast there for a moment. It's kind of bogged down a little bit. Again, just like we thought the last drive was big offensively for River Bluff Leo, I think defensively is just as well. They've yet to force a punt, I don't believe, from Dutch Fork. Exactly. So this is their. Third drive, and this time they have the worst field position they've had yet, I do believe, from the 19-yard line. Taylor's going to deep down, dig down and then throws. He has Hyatt with a man covering him. That was almost intercepted. Hyatt had two men on him. Devin Hyatt, the burner. Number seven there. Who's defending on that play? That was Uriah West. West does a great job right here by taking him deep, running for stride for stride, and making a big play. Yeah, he cut him off the time like he had a better chance to catch that than the receiver did. Good job by West. I'm talking to a defensive back up here with me in the booth. Leo Mott Evans plays a little defensive back for those Clemson Tigers. That might be Craig Williams, number six back there as well. Second and ten. Not a lot of running plays for Dutch Fork. Taylor's going to look over the middle. Then look, it's picked uh, off. Touchdown. It's going to be a pick six. 
River Bluff, that's what they needed. Pick six for number 21. He's been all over the place early. Wyatt Proctor, touchdown Gators. Sonic touchdown, strike up the River Bluff fight song. Big play, Leo. Absolutely. They, they needed this. This is exactly what Dr. ordered. On this play right here, he comes back. He never has a chance to look. And this guy just made the play. Like Proctor read his eyes that time. He read. Actually, it was uh, Mona. It's Mona? So, uh, yes, it's Mona. That's, that's 21. Um, In for the extra point for River Bluff. Is it 20? See if you can get that kicker, get that kicker's name right there for. That was a good job that time. They needed that. That's Braden Styles, the kicker. That might have been 31 on that uh, uh, interception. I thought it was 21. That's that is Adam Molnar. Good catch, Leo, on the pick six. One of our featured players. 218 left to play, and it's a three-point ball game. Let's take another look right here. I believe I thought it was 21. I think that is Molnar 31. That is Adam Molnar on we hey the feature player. You talked about him before the game. Liam Evans, you know you knew things. Hey, I'm telling you, this guy was something for him last year. You know, he's a three year starter. And um, like I said, he's just picking up where he left off. That's last a year. true singer though, right there. His team needed a play. He steps up and makes the play. And you gotta love that. There he is on your screen right there. And again, he played big last year. We saw them last year in this very same matchup, and he was one of the guys that stood up. Willingham and Sons Building Supply and Septic Tanks kickoff coming up right now. Glad to have you with us. Thanks for joining us for the FNR Game of the Week. We think we have a good one brewing right here from Lexington, South Kakilaki. River Bluff now kicking off right to left on your screen. They are in black with green numerals, gold helmets, and it's a short kick. It was not fair caught. That ball was caught at the 30-yard line to get a number. That was number five for Dutch Ford. That was Davin Patterson. He got... About three yard return that time, and Will Partners got to come out now for a shaky last pass. It's, t it's time, you know. Um, it's surprising the Gators slowed them down with this high powered offense. We say they needed something big, and they got something big. Will Taylor, I, I, I dare not think that Tom Tanaks is going to slow down his offense at all because of interception. They're going to put it in there again right here. Jarvis Green, the sophomore running back to the right of Will Taylor. Three wide receivers set. Taylor's going to look over the middle to the tight end. He overthrew it. Big hit delivered that time. Ball intended for number 88. Griffin Reed, the 6'3", 255 tight end. That's a grown man tight end, 6'3", 250. Uh, absolutely. Big Watch, hit by who? Uh, West right here again. This is the second big play today. He comes in, makes, makes a big hit, breaks it up. Got wild, it. wild West on that play. <laughs> Uriah. I, I, I wouldn't make a Uriah Priest joke, but I don't know. I don't know two people to get that one. That's a whole rock group, right? So, second and ten, and Proctor now has been erring on his last several passes. Look at looking over the middle once again. Now he looks right, has a man. He had Devin Hyatt, and then guess what? That time is my guy Wyatt Proctor had a hand on it. They're reading Will Proctor. They're reading Will Taylor's eyes. Yes, right here, you know, you see this guy drops, and he dropped back in that zone. He never saw him. Almost made another great play. 5'11", 155, Junior Wide Project. The, the, the River Bluff fans right beneath us right here, they're getting rowdy right now. They're getting fired up. The PA man is getting fired up. The cheerleaders are kicking a little higher. Everybody jumping a little higher, yelling a little louder. Third and 10, Will Taylor with a tight end in motion. Taylor's going to roll right. Good pressure. Got hit as he threw. We overthrew it by a lot. Will Taylor got smacked. Oh, he took a big shot as he threw that ball. And momentum switching over to the side of River Bluff at this point. Absolutely. These guys have come out and played some defense in the last few series. Watch the hit right here. You watch the secondary. They are really playing discipline so far against the um, Dutch Force offense. That big hit delivered by Joseph Scott. Nose guard came up the left side, plays on the D line. Coach Nice is, so we, I, I have questions. He has questions of Will Taylor. Wicker is the punter, also outstanding linebacker. We talked about. Oh, the, it's muffed. The, the punt was muffed and fallen on by Powell. That was Powell. 
And that was dangerous. They've had some mishandled footballs here else. This game might be all the way in their favor. The bad pitch one time and fumble punt. But right now, Rune Bluff has to take the ball with 147 to play. Leo with a chance to go on a tying or lead changing drive. And again, they, the, the momentum all in the favor of River Bluff right now after the last uh, set of downs we've had here at the Swamp. There's Wicker on your screen, number 38. Our studying linebacker was on JV last year. It's a junior year. He's broke out. He's a breakout player for him. First and 10. It's going to be a give. I think that's Raleigh Myers. We'll check that number. Riley Myers is the carry. He got two yards on the play and the game tackled by the front of Dutch Fork. I don't know if the running game was going to be the key, Leo. I, think, I mean, they got you got to keep them honest by running, but I think the passing game might be where they've had the most success thus far for River Bluff. Other than that first run, the first drive, they had a big run. 117 on the rolling clock, heading to the end of the first quarter. Second and seven. They gave him three yards on that carry. Jackson Stone's your quarterback. Low snap. Good hands by Stone. And he gets. And off to Sansoni. Sansoni gets hit by three. Third four defenders. I think Wicker was one of them. Yes, yeah, sir. Right here, you know, bats. And, and um, 96 and 91 bats. And your man. Um, Travis Bats in there. Yeah, Bats. More. Yeah. yeah they, they had a little team meeting that time. Three guys. And that's it's a lot of big hits from both sides in this game. It's been a very physical ball game. 35 seconds on the rolling clock. This could possibly be the last play of the first quarter if it's not an incomplete pass. River Bluff comes out with three wide receivers to the left, one back in the backfield, and they're going to run left. Jackson Stone shows some good speed, and he runs past the sticks. Stone runs across the 30-yard line. That'll be a first down for River Bluff. That's a love plumbing and electrical first down. He just got the hole, and he got through there in a hurry, and... Uh... Number 12 is coming up on Danley. I mean, he's all over the field. Landon Danley, 12, was the sophomore. That's a love plumbing area. Electrical first down, as we mentioned, for River Bluff. And as suspected, that is the end of the first quarter. This score is going to surprise some people around the state of South Carolina. We've got a lot of football left to play, but the home standing River Bluff Gators, 7, Dutch Fork, 10. Leo Mont Evans, Stacy Huff, glad to have you with us here on the Sonic Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week from Lexington, South Carolina, River Bluff High School. We are back. All ready to play at the 31-yard line. It'll be first and 10, start of the second quarter for River Bluff. River Bluff going left to right on your TV screen. One quarter in the books. River Bluff trails by three. To two men in the backfield. Jackson Stone's your quarterback in shotgun formation. Two wide receivers to the right. He's going to look right. He's going to get hit from the backside and drop right there. Shut down. 33, Darius Cohen Chisholm. 5'8", 190, linebacker. Chisholm, you know, just gets around on the edge, gets back there and make a good play. Unblocked. They have good overall team speed. He shows it right there. Darius Cohen Chisholm. Say 5'8", 175 pounds, a senior. A lot of these guys have been waiting their chance. This team's been loaded for years, four straight championships, and some of these guys have been waiting either on JV or back up some varsity. They've just getting bigger, better, and stronger, and they're just reloading. They're reloading. It's going to be second down and 17 after that loss of seven on the last play. Shotgun snap. He Jackson Stone keeps it. Oh, man, what a physical finish. He tried to run over Danley. Jackson Stone get up and flexes. Watch it. He lowered the boom that time. The quarterback handed off some punishment like, like Halloween candy. Take right, right, here. right here, he breaks through the line of scrimmage. And here's Mr. Danley. Oh, boy. You got, you got to meet him. You got to keep those legs churning when you're coming you up see, and making that. He gave him a little shoulder work when he got him. He did a little shoulder shrug. I'm telling you. Also in on the start for Dutch Focus number 30, Ryan Stewart. But Jackson Stone, 6'2", 180. I don't believe he was quite that big last year. He's been in the weight room. A senior, and he finished that run like you want a runner, a runner to do. They're still behind the sticks because of that sack. Third and six now. Probably a passing down. Look for number 11, Long. 
the Syracuse commit, bottom of our screen. And this time it's going to be a run. Sansoni gets absolutely nothing. Looks like, my God, a sophomore was in on that tackle. Chandler Perry, 5'9", 185, first man to hit him. It's going to bring up fourth down. They're going to give him, they're going to, they're going to mark it down as a yard. It's going to be a fourth and five. And from the 36-yard line, it's going to be punting time for River Bluff. Trying to get a number of that punter. The hair kind of covers up some of the number. Oh, I believe that's 27. Is also the kicker. That's Braden Styles, the junior. And that ball was tipped. He did a rugby-style kick, and he went right into the – and Dutch Fork almost gave that ball back to – Back to River Bluff, and Riley's, Riley Myers got hurt on that play. He already has the arm taped up on the right side. He went in and got his arm falling on, trying to get that fumble. Watch this ball tip right here. And that was Wicker. Another great special team play. You know, Wicker's and really on it, and it's, re it's recovered by number 45 on this play. A Wusu. But they almost gave it back. They bought Dutch Fork bobbled with the ball, and if River Bluff picks it up at that point, it's River Bluff football. Absolutely. So when they, once they touched it, that's two big special teams plays tonight. See, Riley Myers in a lot of pain. He's a tough kid now. He took a beating here last year in this game against Dutch Fork over at Dutch Fork High School. And he's in a lot of pain, but he's a tough kid. We saw that last year. Will Taylor, number nine, is your quarterback, the transfer from Ben Lippin. Clemson baseball and football commit. Taylor looks right. He's going to swing it out to the running back, Jarvis Green. Green splits two defenders, dragged down by Wyatt Proctor, number 21, as he crossed over. It's about the 35-yard line of River Bluff. Right here, just swings it out to um, this guy's a leading rusher. They get up and converge and make the play. 21 has been all over the field. That's my man. I like, I like him. I like the way Proc just played. And that's four, the ball's going to be placed right at the 35-yard line. It's going to bring up second and four. Taylor with... One man to, in the backfield, tight end is in motion. And this time he's going to give it to Green. Green follows his blocker, very patient. Green did a good job being patient behind his blockers, drags a man across the 30-yard line. It'll be a first down. Love plumbing air electrical first down for Dutch Fork. Watch right here. Watch your patience right here. Yeah, she pushed, the, pushed his lineman in front of him to get him out of the way, and get him into a block. Love plumbing air electrical first down, and... Here comes Dutch Fork now oh, leading by three. Four wide receivers set. Two on each side. One man in the backfield. That's Green. Taylor's going to look left. He overshot his receiver. That ball, I believe, is caught. That was an interception. Taylor's been long all night. That's Uriah. That's actually number six, I believe. Now one, now one official saying one said it was intercepted, one said it complete. Take a look. We can't see right there. We got it's a replay. We may have to look at it one more time. Did he get his hands under that ball? I think he did. That's number six for River Bluff. And it's a holding call anyway, but that's Craig Williams who got his I thought he got his hands under it. One official came back and said incomplete. It looked like a pretty good catch to me. Like a catch to me. I know you're a defensive back. I know you always rooting for them to get an assumption, but I think. I think Mr. Williams got got his hands under that ball. I think he made a great play. Those uh, guys were back there playing good coverage. Man, Craig, what you going to do, Craig? You ain't got no job. <laughs> Craig, I think Craig, had, I think Craig Williams caught that ball. That's, that's a break for Dutch Fork. So they called it incomplete. And they're going to mark it back with the holding. It's a, it was like a spot foul 10 yards from the place the holding took place and first and 26 for Dutch Fork they got a break right there though oh now, man I believe that might be that might might auto woulda coulda shoulda been River Bluff football nevertheless here we are tied in in motion three wide receivers in the set he's gonna give the Jarvis Green around the right side Green picks his way good job running once again he gets about six or seven of those yards back and we'll see where they mark it. Nine, yard carry. nine, he got nine on that. Take a look. Here's this kid again. I mean, Wyatt Proctor, 21. Right here, he's all over the place. He's in on the tackle. But Green did a good job running that time. He's 
Sneaky Strong is a sophomore. He was on varsity last year as well. But good job up front for Dutch Fork. Second and 18 is the call. Make it 17. Second and 17. Tight end in motion again. They do a lot of that Dutch Fork, a lot of tight end motion. Taylor's going to look left again. Through to the tight This time, let's the tight end catch the ball. And it's going to be a penalty marker down. This may be the where it was thrown at. It could be a face mask. It could be a face mask. But the ball, they're going to mark the ball at the 23-yard line. Still short of the sticks. And that was big Griffin Reed, a 6'3", 250-pound tight end. You see the flag right there. Gr yellow on green is not a good thing. Right. I mean, this kid had a pretty good, he had a pretty good game. So it is, this panel is against Dutch Fork. It's not a face mask. It's going to be holding on one of the receivers, blocking for the tight end. And, and they're going to march that back again after a good play. So Dutch Fork shooting themselves in the foot. But it was from the spot of the foul, Lil, so they did gain some positive yards on the play. Let's see if we catch number seven holding right here. Uh, blocking the back right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. You can see yeah. that right there. He, he tried to pull up off of it. It was too late, though. He uh, didn't do a lot right there, but it's definitely illegal. Yes. Second down and looks like about 12. Call it second and 13. Ball's at the 33-yard line. Needs to get, need to get to right across the 20. He's go, Taylor looks right, gonna run out, trying to direct traffic. He, oh, he's overshooting people all night. He overthrew that one over the head of Antonio Williams. He's just been high. And he's a baseball uh, pitcher as well. He's just a little bit high and outside the strike zone. Yes, he was a little high on that one. Those interceptions were also high. The one that they didn't call and the other was, he's been, he's been wild high. Third and 13, balls at the 33-yard line of River Bluff. Another big play for River Bluff early in the ball game. And Will Taylor, you got to think here, if they even get any of this, these yards back, they may go for it on fourth down. Fourth and 13, I don't know. If they, get, if they get half of it back, they may go for it. Two wide receivers to the top of the formation. Taylor's going to look. He's looking at his tight end. He looks right. He has Elijah Spencer. Has Elijah Spencer catches that and crosses into the 16-yard line. It's a first down. Love plumbing out electrical first down, and then the Popowski and Shirley red zone, both of those. Right here, I mean, you just put it in the hole. Spencer in at quarterback now. And that was, yeah, I was, I was saying he did a twofer on that one. He got a love plumbing, Aaron Electrical. First down and the Popowski and Shirley. That's a big play indeed. And a t timeout's going to be called by Dutch Fork. And we're going to step away and take this timeout with them. Four-time defending champs on the move. Leading 10-7 over River Bluff from Lexington, South Carolina. to Sonic. Friday Night Rivals. Game of the week. Man, we are having a good time here in Lexington, South Carolina. Good football being played. Leo Mont Evans, Stacey Huff here with you. 10-7 is the score. And coming up in the DHEC halftime report, we'll hear more about these two great schools in our educator spotlight presented by Columbia International University. Don't want to miss that. And the band played on. Leo Mont Evans, former Clemson Tiger, played for the Washington football team. Had a different name back then. And the Houston, Texas. Leo Mont is a defensive back. Talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing, the adjustment or the strategy by River Bluff in the secondary. River Bluff is um, playing a lot of uh, zone back there. So a lot of the times when um, Dutch Fork is throwing that ball, you're going to have two or three men around that football, and that's what's happening. You know, unfortunately, he had a few overthrows, but um, they're playing exactly what they're supposed to do, and they're being disciplined about it. That's what it is. So a, good, a, a pro defensive back giving props to River Bluff. They're doing a great job back there. This brings up. First to 10, they did get a first down that last play, but we've seen some errant throws. Jarvis Green, the running back, get out on the route, and it's a short pass to Elijah Spencer. Elijah Spencer, the UNC Charlotte commit, I do believe, as a wide receiver, and he caught that and got positive yards right here. Oh, well, yes, that's Spencer there, and um, here's the man again, Malinor. I mean, he's all over the field. He's even got a touchdown on defense tonight. So. He's doing it all. He's yes. landscaping the field, did the hedges. The little drywall before the game is 624 in the first half. Left to play second and three coming up. That's too many yards on first down for Dutch Fork. Taylor slaps his left thigh. 
Brings the tight end in motion. They do a lot of tight end motion at Dutch Fork. Always have. It's going to be a give to Jarvis Green in the middle. Hey, he runs hard. That's a hard run that time by the sophomore running back. He gets a first down. Love plumbing and air electrical first down as they drive further into the Popowski Shirley red zone. Take a look right here. You look how this guy just run with the determination. He's just breaking tackles and carrying people up field with him. And the helmet that you see on the ground there is Griffin Reed, number 88, the tight end senior. He's going to have to step out of play. Uh, the helmet rules in effect. And the PA announcer, you may hear him. He's getting the crowd riled up. River Bluff, the Gators, trying to defend that swamp end zone to our left. Right there in your living room right now. They're coming right at you. Will Taylor has a tight end in motion again. And it's going to be a pre-snap penalty. That's usually on the offense. And it's going to be a legal proceed. Oh, excuse me, delay of game. Early on the field is delay of delay game. Delay of game, excuse me. I did not see, did not notice the play clock on that one. It was first and goal from the seven. They're going to do a little Michael Jackson moonwalk and take it back to see it'll be first and 12. Now. That's one thing you have you hate to have um, when you're in the red zone, cost yourself yardage, you know. It's just not a good thing, but guys, we'll see what they do. And of course, Tom Knox is not going to be pleased with that. We have Elijah Spencer right below us right here on the sideline. Also, Antonio Williams, the two receivers in the ball game, tight end in motion once again. Looks left. It's going to be Spencer. Oh, he didn't lead him. He, made, he had to sit down and catch that, so they get the ball back. Just about the original line of scrimmage before the penalty, the ball will be in the six-yard line. Right here, you know, he throws it a little bit behind Spencer, but he, you know, he makes a good catch. Yeah, good Grabbing job. the ball behind him. Yeah, it's sure hands. Job. That's right, sure hands by him. But Taylor's off a little bit tonight. He's off a little bit. 10-7 um, is your score. Judge Fort looking for their second touchdown of the ball game. This time, two receivers, same formation. to the. They flip it to the other side this time. Two tight ends in a lot. They, do, they run a lot of 12 personnel. Taylor's going to look this time. He has, again, it's overthrown to out of bounds. Taylor's been long with a lot of throws yes, tonight. And he had Spencer. Elijah Spencer was the man. He was, excuse me, Antonio Williams, the man he was going for. Take a look. Overthrown. Right here. I mean, he's got his man beat. Just a little bit outside. You know, he's Just been a little, little outside. A little over on a couple of throws tonight. This P, my PA guy right here, my, the PA guy here is definitely caffeinated. He's fired up. I like it. Good energy here from the, the PA guy here at the Swamp. They flip the formation again, the same formation. Williams in the slot. Elijah Spencer outside and Tom Knotts called a timeout. And he's walking. He's, he's meeting his team. When, when a coach comes out and meets the team before they get to the sideline, it's usually not good. We're going to step away and take a break while Tom Knox has a little huddle up right there. Leo Mont Evans, Stacey Huff, and you. It's the Sonic Friday Night Rivals. High school football game of the week from Lexington and River Bluff Campus, the Swamp. Stay right where you are. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us here from the Swamp, River Bluff Campus. They trail 10-7. Coming up in the D-Hack Halftime Report, we'll introduce you to this week's Scholar Athletes presented by Crosby Roofing. Crosby Roofing, proud sponsor of the Scholar Athlete of the Week. Take a look at some of the Dutch Fork fandom right there with their, their relative, their players' numbers on the face mask. Social distancing is in effect here at the Swamp. Off exit 61, I-20. Rolling with my golfing buddy, Leomont Evans. One day I'm going to beat Leo Mott in golf. It hadn't happened yet. I'm going to get him one day. Third and six coming up. Third and goal. And another way to put that. Big stop for River Bluff right now. The fans are getting loud. Dutch Fork hunting their second touchdown of the ball game. 4.23 left in the half. Taylor with two receivers to his right. Gives the greens a reverse. And it's going to be Antonio Williams. He's going to walk in. Great play call. But it's going to be a flag down and maybe a hold on Dutch Fork. The play looked a little too easy, and maybe that's why. Leo. Yes, a lot of time when you get yes. that um, misdirection going, and you're going back the other way, and guys, uh, you know, make make mistakes like that. Let's take a look. See, if we catch a ride. Oh, oh that, yes, that, that's that. That's that guy right there. I won't call the kid. I'll give him a break. He definitely hit him in the back. Legal block in the back. Call. Balls will be placed at the 23-yard line. 
Good job by production team right there catching that, as always. They don't miss, they don't miss much, if anything. Oh, don't put the camera on anybody. We're not saying who did that. We're not gonna say who. <laughs> We're not gonna say who might have done it. This that's a big penalty though. That's third and for third and goal at the six, it's third and twenty-three. River Bluff couldn't have asked for anything better than that, except maybe a turnover. And they've gotten one already early in the ball game. Taylor's gonna look over the middle. Now he looks right. Back to the middle, back right. It's gonna be short. And that, he hits his tight end that time. That's Josh Smith, the junior, 6'1", 205, and it'll be field goal time, we think, for Dutch Fork. It's going to be fourth and goal from the 17, make it the 18-yard line, and they're going to bring in their field goal kicker, the junior, 5'11", 165, Furkan Unladaskaran, Unladaskaran, and he's going to kick for the 25, making this a 35-yard field goal. He's made one from just about... A couple of yards closer. He has the leg, Leo. The hold is down, good, and the kick is up, and no good left. Wide left, Oluda Skiron. Good job by River Bluff holding, and it shoots a jolt of energy to this crowd here, Leo. Excellent job by the Gators defense again. I mean, um, that's for was down in the red zone for a lot of times, but they really hurt themselves by penalties and, you know, they had an earlier turnover, so. River Bluff has everything set up and going their way to try to pull an upset tonight. They Absolutely. Have, they, have, they have the four-time defending champs on their home turf. Senior night, by the way, they acknowledge the seniors, you know, from cheerleaders, band, football players, trainers, a lot of folks here, good night for football, and they've gotten some breaks and they played exceptionally well I want to put it on breaks. They've actually played well on both sides of the ball. And 325 left to play in the half. They're going to look to try to take the lead here. Starting this drive from the 20-yard line. Run this time by Riley Myers. I'll tell you, a tough kid. Went out the game earlier. Doesn't get much on that play, but he's a tough kid. Gets a gain of two at that time. Yes, uh, you got um, these guys right here. Um, okay, it looks like a Wusu. A Wusu. And Gabe Wise, 44 and 45 on the time. Gain of just one on the play. Let's see if the defensive front from Dutch Fork penetrates again. They're very strong and fast in, that, uh, in the middle of that defensive line. And there they are again. They penetrate again. A lot of white jerseys. That play had no chance. And it's Riley Myers again. The, the, the white jerseys took over that line of scrimmage from the snap. They're quick off the ball. And that's Danley. Yes. It's that's what, it, Danley again. I mean. These brothers are making big plays tonight. Just look how the line of scrimmage look changes. All the white jerseys came I mean, through. This guy is playing in the secondary. Dale is coming up fast. So. so second down and, excuse me, make that third down. And it's going to be, looks like 13, make it 12. Third and 12 from the 18-yard line. Jackson Stone, your senior quarterback, looks over for the play. He has three wides to the top of the screen. He's going to look that way. It's going to be so long. He needs to break a tackle here. And he does not. Danley again. Danley's all over the field making plays. He's all over To Trace field. Danley, the senior. He just made it on the left side. Now he's on the right side. He looks like a young Leomont Evans <laughs> from Abbeville High School. <laughs> a long time ago. This guy is coming up. That's what you want out of a cornerback. You want a defensive back that's not only covered, you want him to come up and make big plays like that. So this added. Yeah, he is doing his thing, man. His younger brother, a sophomore, also made a couple tackles in the ball game. So they're loaded. I do believe the Danley brother, I think he may have been part of the River Bluff program uh, at some point. But they're over at Dutch Fork now and making play. They're showing up really big on this particular evening. Nice October night. And River Bluff's going to call a timeout. Looks like they had the offense still on the field. We'll stay right here with them as they take this timeout. 120 to play in the half. Looks like the I don't think the punting team was on, were they? No. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're feeling hungry or thirsty, look like they're uh, looking to go for this thing. That might be a bluff. They may try to get some free yards, but even the offsides only gives you five yards. They're gonna come out with the punt team after this timeout. Absolutely. Uh, again, we're gonna we have a lot to say if they don't. You and I are gonna talk about it if they don't. <laughs> if, if they go for this right now. They're going to be handing Dutch Fork field position. It's been a long first half. Look at the stands right there. 
Moving to the beat. Look, look at that jerk. What is, what is that shirt say right there? What's that? That's that's that university. That's got Clemson on it. Huh? That's the um, number one school in the nation, I believe. Of course you're gonna say that. Of course you're gonna say that. <laughs> they have uh, a big one with Miami tomorrow. Well, you know, uh, like I always say, Miami's playing real good this year, but. Miami's only got one problem. They're playing at the wrong place. Saturday. Nah, they play the wrong place. They're, wrong the, place. they're at the Valley tomorrow. They're at the Valley. Oh, man. How, how did it feel running down that hill, man? It had to be a, a thrill. Hey, man, that's like something I can't even talk about. <laughs> it's, it's like there's got to be a rush, man. <laughs> it is. On to punt now for River Bluff. Uh, been a busy man tonight as far as extra points and punting. Brandon, Brandon Styles. This one's low. It's going to take a good bounce, though. It took a good bounce. It bounces down to about the 35-yard line. Dutch Fork will take over, 109 to play, and Will Taylor's arm will come into play right here. He's thrown a lot this game, and I think we'll see it again right here. Yeah, we go. Uh, hopefully um, they, they try to get some points before um, the half, but um, we're going to see. We're going to see if uh, he turned them loose. I can't, I, I'd be very surprised if they don't go up top until the clock. Absolutely. Zero in the first half. This, the, the atmosphere here is really charged tonight. This is their first game. Remember, this is opening night. They've been waiting on this night at River Bluff since last season. And it's going to be another timeout called. River this is River Bluff. It's their last timeout of the half, 109 to play. And you see the Coach Harden. Coach Harden was a head coach at North Myrtle Beach. High school before coming to River Bluff. He's at North Myrtle Beach for three years. And his fourth year here at River Bluff. Mitch, he's a native of Kannapolis, North Carolina. Played at A.L. Brown High School, which is a powerhouse in a couple sports up in North Carolina. A.L. Brown's a big, well-known athletic factory in North Carolina, but he played there in the Kannapolis area. That's Coach Tom Nas. We know he won seven championships at Independence High School in Charlotte. And now five here. A lot of people know about the four Pete Leo, but you know, he won one before that. He won Dirk Fork's first ever football championship over Sumter High School a couple years before that. Tom Noss is an outstanding coach. You know, he's been in two different states and been very successful. And, um, they love him here, so. You and, he, you and he have something else in common as well. He went to Duke University and he played defensive back at Duke University. He was a defensive back at Duke, yes. So, yes, he, you know, you'll both have that in common. It is first and 10. Dutch Fork looking to add points before the half. 109 on the clock. Will Taylor, thrown a lot tonight. He's going deep. He has a man, it's Hyatt. Oh, Hyatt was distracted just enough. A defender came over just to distract Devin Hyatt. Hyatt wearing the seven his brother wore at Dutch Fork. Take a look, watch your hand come over right at the last second. <laughs> just enough to distract him. If he catches that, you know, he's running all the way down I-20, right? By himself. He's going down I-20. He's heading toward downtown Columbia. Kicking himself in the behind all the way. Second and 10. I don't think you'll see the last of the throwing plays. Just second and 10, as I mentioned, 102 left in the clock. The ball's at the 35-yard line. Speed all over the field for Dutch Fork. Taylor's going to give this time to Jarvis Green. Green goes out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. He gets sneaky yards, though. He always seems to get more yards when he carries than it looks like. This guy, uh, Green, you know, he follows his blockers. He does a good job of just letting those guys get out in front of him and then just, you know, the rest of his talent. Yeah, he's a talented kid. Man, I've been hearing about this kid since he's about seventh or eighth grade. I, people on this side of town tell me this Green kid is going to be special. Also, again, a very exceptional basketball player as well. Dutch Fort played for the 5A basketball championship this uh, last year. No, empty backfield now. Green goes into the route. Spencer catches it. Oh, big collision at midfield. And Elijah Spencer goes out of bounds right at, right at midfield. That's going to be first down. I love plumbing and electrical first down. Great play right here. Spencer gets the catch. Here's my man again, Wes, coming up to uh, make a good play. Somebody hit that ball. He had to cover it up as he was running that time. Almost came loose. Love plumbing air, electrical first down. And from midfield, the clock is rolling, though. Um, the clock rolled. I guess they reset after the out of bounds. They restarted the clock up. But Taylor's in no real big hurry, but he's going to take a shot right here. We know they're throwing the ball downfield for the most part. 33 seconds left in the half. 
He's going to hand it off again. I'm surprised that the running play be run green again. Green I'm, I'm surprised not to keep it on the ground right now. Yeah, that was. This clock's going to stop with 25 seconds. And we'll talk to our coaches, one going into halftime, one coming out. And we'll be interested to see how both of them feel with the score being 10-7. I got a feeling we'll have two opposite type emotions from the coaches. Second and nine, only a gain of one on that play by Green. Taylor puts the tight end in motion again. It's Reed, gonna look right, short pass. Needs a break of tackle right here. This may, this could be the last play if they don't hurry up. That was Antonio Williams. Timeout with 18 seconds left to play in the half. Coach Knox in the customary shorts, regardless of the weather. That's a that's a massive lineman there. Big look at number 74 for Dutch folk. That's a large fellow who's not in our program. Might be Craig Holloman. He has 76 on his arm. That may be Craig Holloman. His armband says 76 with a 74 on the jersey, but I think it's Craig Holloman. That's a big that's a good big size kid, 320 pounds. That's that's a man. So I mean, he's missing no meals. Oh, absolutely you know, not. The grocery bill high. <laughs> yes. Grocery bill on 10 at the Holloman crib. I'm telling you. <laughs> the DJ is doing a good job here tonight. The PA announcer is doing a good job. I like it. I'm having a good time. It smells like team spirit. No school tomorrow. I miss a lot to celebrate. Clemson on TV tomorrow. Gamecock should get a victory over Vanderbilt. Never say for sure. It's a good night. <laughs> Will Taylor on your screen, the senior. There's too much clumps are going on here tonight for me. Will Taylor, Leomont Evans, people wearing jackets in the stands. Third and three. Jarvis Green around the right side. If they mark him out of bounds, they're going to stop the clock, but only briefly, 12 seconds to play. So you may see an end zone shot here. That'll... Ball. Ball's going to be placed at the 38. That's a love plumbing air and electrical first down, Leo, and 12 seconds to play. What do you think? I, I think it's time to take a shot down the field. They haven't uh, so far in the plays that they've run. At some point, you got to get into the end zone, but if you if you drop back and throw it to the end zone, you might not get but one play. Right. Shotgun formation, of course. Will Taylor with Green to his right. Green's in the route. Everybody's in the route. Overthrown again behind and high for Elijah Spencer. No Dutch board receivers in the area. And yeah, that was just an errant throw. So with eight seconds to play, you got to go to the end zone here. I mean, he, he has Spencer. Uh, that's some miscommunication on that uh, play right there. Spencer was going across the middle. He threw it behind him a little bit. Agreed. But I thought they would take a shot earlier. I did too. Coach Knox is yelling. So you'll see here, eight seconds to play. Unless he throws a quick one and try to get a timeout to kick a field goal. Green to the left. He may go in the route. He's been going out into the pass route. He's going to carry it this time. Jarvis Green, that's going to be the last player to have. Conservative play call. And they call a timeout with one second to play. Wow. So now they go to the end zone right here, I guess. That's a good job. If you know you got a timeout in the pocket, you can run up the middle. Yep. I mean... This is interesting uh, because I thought they would uh, go down the field earlier on this on this drive when they got it down here with a few seconds before the half, but he chose to stay conservative. Very interesting. So I guess they're they playing for the throw to the end zone right here. Look at Jarvis Green with his helmet off right at number four. Breathing hard. He's he's spinning every pass route or carrying the ball on this drive. Yeah, young man, let's have him right there talking in the huddle right there. Sophomore being a leader. He was a captain, by the way. The captains for the night for Dutch Fork. Jarvis Green, the sophomore, was one of them. 11, Elijah Spencer. Edward Awusu, the senior defensive end. And Chandler Perry, a sophomore, the captains. Right. So that's two sophomores as your captains. That's leadership. That's Coach Tom Knox right there. And captains for River Bluff were Jackson Stone, your quarterback. Adam Molnar, we featured in the pregame. Zane Derrick, number 58. And Jakari Davis, 95, a lineman, tight end, defensive end. Yes. Got to go to the, got to go to the, to the flag right here, right? To yes, the cone. I, I say just put it up. I say put it up. Put it in there. Yes, sir. As Snoop Dogg might say. Yes. Put it in there. Put it in there and let somebody <laughs> go get it. <laughs> put it in there. Put it in there. Let somebody go get it. Put it in there. Let somebody go get it. Put it in there. Let somebody go get it. Put it in there. Let somebody go get it. Put it in there. Let som
put it in there. Here we go. We'll see Will Taylor's arm again. He's a pitcher. He's got. He's had too much arm. He's been overshooting receivers, but you know he can get it to the end zone. Let's see that Sunday go to meet and play. Three wide receivers in the formation. Everybody playing back for River Bluff. Oh, it was deflected. And Antonio Williams cut. You know, he's going to score. Can you believe this? That's just an athlete it. being an athlete. That was a bad uh, ball. Bounce to the hands of Williams. Such a touchdown, play. Antonio Williams. Touchdown, Dutch Fork. Sonic touchdown. Strike up the Dutch Fork fight song. You can't are, draw are you that kidding up. me? You cannot draw that up. <laughs> oh, man. He didn't think he had to do. He, he cut it inside. Absolutely. If he went outside, the half ends. He went inside where he knew he could split the defenders. Watch this. And give credit to that quarterback for getting it off. Look at this guy. He just break tacos, and he was trying to get in the end zone. That's a back break. And, and he's hit when he threw. It was a, oh. a hit throw. Hit, hit quarterback on the throw, and that's just – Antonio Williams, an athlete, been an athlete. I was told before the game that he might be the guy I'll come out of here talking about. Oh, man, about three people touched that ball then and then still got to the end zone. So. The Sonic Cherry Lime can't even believe it. He's like, <laughs> Are you, what was that? Are you kidding me? I heard the Cherry Lime made talk. He texted me about it. Unbelievable. Extra, extra point is up and good for Dutch Fork by Furkan Unludiskiran. And look at that. He's happy. You got to go tell him about it. You do it, you got to go hey. tell your teammates, I did it. Look what that, I did. That young man made a big play there. And now, with the, the Dayton Times, now everybody gets their own little small water bottle. We don't have the big squeeze bottles, but everybody gets their own little water bottle. Oh, yeah. So that's the half. 17-7, Dutch Fork extends the lead to 10 over River Bluff. Leo, what a play. That was spectacular at the end right there. Absolutely. Absolutely. 17-7 again. That score might surprise some people. Dutch Fork, a team that's been putting up 50 points per game on a 34-point pace right now. They come on the road playing River Bluff in their first game. Take a look. look one more look. Once you hit at the, from the back side, bat it. Bat it might have been Monar. And just breaking tackles. Not the best job tackling for River Bluff, but just... Antonio Williams made a spectacular play. That'll be on his highlight reel. Yes. So, so we're here on senior night at River Bluff High School. There's a look at Antonio Williams, number eight on your screen right there. He's had an outstanding first half. Had a couple first down making catches early in the game. And, of course, that touchdown. Absolutely. This kid runs uh, great after he catches the football and, uh, you know, if, if it wasn't for that play right there, which you got to have a lot of luck, River Bluff would still be in this game. And let's head down to the field, talk to Coach Tom Knotts. Coach Knotts. He's talking to me. Uh, coach Knotts, Stacy Huff here in the booth up here talking to you, Coach. Okay, here. I'm, I'm up in the booth, Coach. Can you hear me? You're, you're, you're like a. Uh, uh, you can't hear me, Coach? You're like a Burger King. <laughs> Two <laughs> Whoppers. Uh, coach, can you not hear me? Coach Knotts says I'm like a Burger King. Can you hear oh, me, Coach? Oh, maybe they're talking. I don't know. Coach Knotts, can you hear me? Barely. Co okay, Coach Knotts, this is Stacy. Talk about the first half. Can you talk about your first half performance? I don't know what you said, but you probably should have said something about the last play, and I'm going to tell you it was just how we drew it up. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we started on all cylinders, and then we started missing at the end. Uh, I don't know what happened in the second quarter, but we're going to go try to get it straight. Uh, but what a great athletic play by uh, our quarterback and, and our ex. Uh, just, how, how, you know, just how we drew it up. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thank okay, you, Coach. Thank you. Thank right. you. Right. Coach Tom Knox can have it his way. Hold the whopper. Hold the onions. Hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. That's a Wusu right there. 17 seconds to score in half. Stay with us. Welcome to our Dig Hag Halftime Report. The score is 17-7, Dutch Fork over River Bluff. And now it's time to check in with our Educator Spotlight. A spotlight brought to you by Columbia International University. And check in with Chloe Carlson with a couple of educators. Hey, guys, I have with me football head coach and athletic director at River Bluff, Blair Harden. Blair, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your head coach of the football team, you're also athletic director of these fall sports. What's been your approach uh, to these fall sports in this pandemic? 
Well, really just to, to push everything through. I mean, we've had some speed bumps and every, every day is a new day. Um, we have to adjust your schedule or transportation or, or, I mean, games. So everything's changing, but it, uh, we, we've got a great department, um, coaches, uh, our administration, and everybody's just been so flexible to adjust and, and just maintain a great attitude. And the kids have been awesome in the building and after school and, and just pushing through and just seeing our kids on campus every day in the classroom competing and athletics. It's, it's a, uh, it feels good. It feels like a, a true fall now. Um, it just, you know, sometimes you have to adjust and that's just part of it right now. Sure. Uh, kind of have the fall sports set in, but what is your plan going forward in the rest of the year? Well, really, so right now we're planning for winter and winter starts here very soon in about another month. So, you know, I guess a lot of, I guess one thing to be happy about is we've made it through most of our fall sports and we have something about to start and it's exciting to start preparing for the winter time because they're going to start uh, here in November. So just to finish strong this fall, um, I know a lot of our winter coaches are eager to see their athletes, student athletes, and spend time with them and, and get ready. So we've, we have a lot of tournaments coming up for Thanksgiving and Christmas that we're preparing for and socially distanced and we have signs. So it's just, it's been a busy year, but it's worth it to see these kids on campus and compete. Thank you very much for that. And for our Scholar Athlete of the Week, presented by Crosby Roofing for River Bluff High School, Elena Gindlisberger. Elena is the cross-country captain at River Bluff, where she also plays soccer. At school, she has a 5.145 GPA and is a member of the National Honor Society and Beta Club. In the community, Elena volunteers with Homeworks of America and is a youth group leader. She hasn't decided on a college yet, but we wish her the best wherever she goes. Once again, congratulations to Elena Ginlisberger of River Bluff High School, our Crosby Roofing Scholar Athlete of the Week. Headed to break right now. More of the DHEC Halftime Report coming up after this. Score 17-7, Dutch Fork over River Bluff. Welcome back to our Dig Egg Halftime Report. It's now to check in with our Educator Spotlight, brought to you by Columbia, Columbia International University. And let's check in with Chloe Carlson. Hey, everyone. I have with me Dutch Fork Principal, Dr. Gary. I also have a Sonic Supervisor, Jason Azarigian, here with me today. Now, Dr. Gary, I have to talk about this football team. Just saw on Max Preps, you guys are ranked 20th in the nation. How... How proud are you of your team winning state championships a few years in a row and also being ranked 20th in the nation? Very excited. It is always great when football does well. The school starts off in the fall and always have a big crowd. So always excited about football season. Got a great team. Lost a lot of good players last year, but a lot of players returning, stepping up, doing big things. So we're very excited about football and another year of football at Judge Fork High School. And Dr. Gary, we know you have an amazing football team. You won state championship last year, but maybe a lot of people don't know this. You are very successful with your school as well. Talk about the award that you won last year. Absolutely. Last year, the SCASA recognized Dutch Fork High School as a Palmetto's finest school, one of the best schools in the state of South Carolina at the high school level. So we're really excited about that. That encompasses academics, athletics, the arts, the entire culture. So we're excited about the job we do not only in athletics, but what we do in providing our students um, for life after high school. Sure. And this time has been unprecedented for a lot of schools. What's been your approach uh, to school in this pandemic? It's all about the teachers. We've got great teachers. They're flexible. They're working hard with our students. Our students are doing a great job. They're social distancing. They're wearing their masks. They're doing things that the CDC recommends. Our parents are supportive. But we, we just think we have a great product here. We got supportive community, supportive district leadership, great students and great faculty and staff. And when you have all those things together, you can have a world-class school like Dutch Fork High School. And Dr. Gary, you have a very successful football team, a very successful school and successful fans. I'm gonna let Jason take it from here for some exciting news. So you won this year's Car Out for Cash again. Unfortunately, this year I have to present you with this virtual check for $500. This is your second year in a row winning, so congratulations. Thank you and so keep, much. Keep, you. keep up the great work at Dutch Fork High School. Thank you so much, and thank you for Sonic for, for, for recognizing us and, and for hosting us every year. Let's check in with our scholar athlete, 
presented by Crosby Roofing for Dutch Fork High School, and it is Griffin Reed, a tight end on the football team. Griffin is a three-time state champion in football and a state runner-up in lacrosse. At school, he has a 4.23 GPA and is an AP and honor student taking STEM courses. He is also a member of the National Honor Society. In the community, he volunteers at the Children's Hospital and is in the Children's Ministry at his church. Griffin is undecided on his future plans, but we wish him the best wherever he goes. Once again, congratulations to Griffin Reed, this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week for Dutch Fork High School, and that's brought to you by Crosby Roofing. Stacy Huff, Leo Mont Evans, and you. It is halftime at the Swamp on the campus of River Bluff High School, Lexington, South Carolina. Your score, Dutch Fork Silver Fox at 17. The Gators of River Bluff, 7. Stay with us. Welcome back in to our DHEC halftime report. We stand at 17-7. The four-time defending 5A champion Dutch Fork Silver Foxes 17, River Bluff Gators 7. And the score that's closer than some might have thought at halftime, but we've had a lot of big hits, big plays in the ball game. And how do we get here 17-7? We will not be selfish. We will share with you how this all occurred. First half highlights, Will Taylor up top, the Ben Lippin transfer, Elijah Spencer, the UNC Charlotte 49er commit, barrels in for a touchdown. Second time, Molnar, the second score of the scoreboard was at the 10-0 lead by Dutch Fork. Adam Molnar, the senior linebacker, pick six to La Casa. Will Taylor on the final touchdown of the first half on a, just a crazy play. Ball misdirected, tipped, tapped, and topped eventually by Antonio Williams as he takes it into the end zone to close out the scoring. 17-7 is your score. Dutch Fork. So we go to some top players around the country, and I always enjoy these highlights. This is now in that district. And they're always good as Locke goes up to try to catch a great throw. Did he come down with it? He did. Touchdown. Smith wants to go deep. Fires, single coverage. Oh, Locke's yeah. got it. What a catch. Locke. Touchdown, O'Connor! He will not be stopped! From the nine, Shane steps up, throws, end zone. Oh, big hit! <laughs> Nixon knocked it loose. Huge call, but Hoover's gonna go up top, looking for it all, and what a one-handed grab! Malik Thomas. Much scoring in the fourth quarter, Tom. Yeah, it was. 31 total points, and he came down to a pass there for Gaffney to take the lead. Green. Looking right, sets, and his receiver fell down and still makes the catch of the 28 as Hinton oh, fell down. Word. <laughs> Second down to 10. Not that good. They do the double <laughs> reverse. Dinkins and Cress. Lots of field in front. And the end zone. Fox. Gonna be chased down. Down he goes. Guess who got him? Hayden Nelson. A lot of time in the pocket. He dropped that pass in there. Sure did. Just beautiful. He well, dropped it a beautiful play. Well placed ball. And that ball was on his helmet. He caught that ball in the back of his helmet. <laughs> Welcome back inside the Sonic Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week. The DHEC Halftime Report. Leo Mott Evans, Stacey Huff here with you. 17 7 is the score. Leo Mott, some people are surprised at that, but River Bluff played a pretty good game. First half. River Bluff played a tremendous first half of football, especially on the defensive side. A lot of people didn't know, you know, they would even be in here this close because right. Dutch Fork is, you know, like I said before the game, putting up 60 points a game. But this team has came out and challenged them. Yeah, so, so, so the Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union keys to the game. We'll talk about some of the keys to the game and how do they do that this first half? How, how do they hold up the keys they say they were going to do coming to the game? How do they do that? Well, first of all, you know, Dutch Fork on um, offense, Play to their potential. They have really, they really haven't did that uh, in the first half. And then, you know, secondly, set the tone on defense. Um, they didn't do that either. So, and uh, River Bluff on offense, they protect the ball. You know, they only uh, turn it over once and create turnovers, which they've done. Absolutely, had a couple, had an interception. And not only did they get a turnover, they got a turnover four points. You can't beat that as well. So that's the key to the game. Brought to you, of course, by Palmetto Citizen Federal Credit Union. And that's how we got to the score, 17-7. We showed you the highlights earlier. And that's the story from the Swamp.
Leo Mott. And now we go down to the field for our coach's corner. Brought to you by Blythewood Wildlife Removal. And we do have Coach Blair Harden on the field. Coach Harden, pretty good first half. Talk about your team's performances on both sides of the ball in the first half. Coach Harden, we can't hear Coach Harden. We'll try it again. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we got you now, Coach. Yeah, I think you heard my question. Yes, sir. I got you. We moved the ball well. We moved the ball well, but then we just got to be more consistent and finish drives. Our defense is playing great. We'll give up a a, a, a play of one second left. But I tell you, I couldn't be any prouder of our defense. Offensive, we got to help out. And then two short fields with punts. Uh, we just got to do a better job in special teams, and we got to finish drives and just keep chipping away. No doubt, Coach. Good luck to the second half, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thank you, bud. All right, this is Coach Blair Harden in his fourth season here at River Bluff High School. Before that, North Myrtle Beach. And is a Citadel alum, Kannapolis native. And again, Lil Mott, like we both, we've talked about, and he just kind of mentioned it too. Before that last play in the first half, they really, it was a three-point game. And not, again, that's going to surprise some people, but River Bluff had a good plan, and they stuck to it. Um, River Bluff has been overwhelmingly uh, good, you know, just as good to be the first game of the season, you know. These guys are playing pretty good, and the defense was lights out first half. And until one second, you know, one play can make a difference. That was a freak of a play. And, I mean, even Tom Knotts himself, I mean, you, you know, of course, no one plans for that play, but that's just an athlete being an athlete. It's going to happen in sports. But that's all, not quite back-breaking, but it's definitely a momentum changer right at the end of the first half and kind of crushing for River Bluff, as, as we all said, played a good game to see the score 17-7 when you knew it was going to be at worst, maybe 10-7, maybe 13-7, and they get that dynamic play at the final play of the half. So look at what's coming up on Watch 57 all day tomorrow. We have football starting at high noon, the Texas Longhorns, Oklahoma in the Red River shootout. And then at 4 o'clock, TCU hot off an upset victory last week. And they take on Kansas State. That's the 4 p.m. game. So 12 and 4, back-to-back -back action right here on Watch Fox 57. You don't want to miss it. Tune in. Big day of football nationwide. And, of course, we have a lot of action right here for you. So we got you covered on that. And, again, it's a chilling squad for River Bluff with an RB on the lettering. Phil Collins playing on the system. You can't beat it, Leo. I'm having a good time. How about you? Man, I'm having a fantastic time, and I'm ready for a good second half full of football. Same game, same here. You see that logo right there at Gators. I think it's one of the best in the game, in the business out here. And this stadium, the facilities here, a lot of people know about it. And uh, it's really uh, appealing to the eye. It's a great atmosphere. And, again, senior night. So we also want to let you know that all the pageantry and big plays, hard hits you see here, you can – Get a copy. You can order your copy of tonight's broad Sunday, Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Email us at dvds at watch.com or send 20 bucks, $20 per DVD. That's five. That's four fives, two tens, or 20 $1 bills. And that's your business how you get any of that. But you mail it on in. And you can, uh, of course, you know, take, of course, debit cards as well. But you want to see that week six, October 9th right there. And if you got a roller coaster, we take coins. We take we take a lot of people don't take coins nowadays, but we do. We'll take it. You know, it's, it spins. Look at that beautiful shot right there on a beautiful night here in the Midlands of South Carolina. Nothing like high school football in South Carolina on a Friday night. And we have that for you. Like I said, all season long, delayed but not denied, Leomont. It's it's been a um interesting few months <laughs> leading up to yes. football period. It is. I mean, it really has and a lot of, I mean, before then, we, we didn't even expect we were going to have it, but hey, look look at where we are tonight. And we, you know, I, we talked earlier, I was here with Leon Mine Evans, I talked about him playing with the Washington football team for most of his pro career in the Texans, and before that, the Clemson Tigers. I didn't mention, I think I might have threw it in one time, mentioned your Abbeville team, your uh, Abbeville native, won a state championship at Abbeville. What year did you win that state championship at Abbeville? Um, 1992. Back in the day. And that sets you on a path that took you to up, up the Death Valley. And, Played for Spurrier, was with Spurrier for a year up in, up in the D.C. area and then on to the Texans and now playing golf with me a lot. <laughs> You've been all over the place. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, just living the life. It's just good to have you with us, man. Glad to have you here and with your expertise to the, to the broadcast. And we have kickoff coming up. It is the River Bluff Gators in black, green numerals, gold helmets. Kick it off left to right. It's the Willingham and Sons kickoff. Willingham and Sons building, supply, and septic tanks. 
foot meets leather. It's a short one. I hate that pooch kick. I really do. And it's fumbled. It's, it's, you know what? They muffed it a little bit. That's kind of what you want. But Jarvis Green finally falls on it, the starting tailback for Dutch Fork, the sophomore. And that's how we'll start it right here with Will Taylor in his offense taking over after, again, a highlight reel type of play. And we'll see if Ruben Bluff can get them off the field. Taylor looks right, looks left, excuse me. He has Antonio Williams, a touchdown maker, right at the sticks. Let's see. Let's see where they mark this. It'll be very close to the first down. They may mark him a yard short, but Antonio Williams is having himself a ball game. Take a look at this. That's a rifle shot that time by Will Taylor. He threw that ball in the perfect place and caught with the hands, Williams, as they teach it, and three men down on him. And Sen Sen Sony is one of the tacklers here, a very physical kid for River Bluff. They call it nine, it'll be second and one. Hey, defensive backs don't like second and one, dude, because you got to watch the run and the pass right here, right? Absolutely. So we come out with a two wide. This time they go two wide receiver set. They, they were running three wides most of the first half. Tight end in motion as usual with Dutch Fork. Taylor looks right, has a man. It's on the money. And this could be. They needed one for the first down. They got seven. And that was Williams again. It's Taylor and Williams playing catch. West Shore home first down. Get up, get up, West Shore home is our first down sponsor. So first to 10 from the 40. Early in the third quarter, 11.03 on the game clock. I said game clock, not game cock, Leo. Don't get nervous. It's a game <laughs> on the game clock. Jarvis Green moves from the right to the left. Bobble snap. Taylor lost the handle on that, got down on it at the 30-yard line, a loss of 10 yards on the play, and that's going in the wrong direction. On this play right here, it's just a um, bad play by the center and the quarterback. I mean, Took his eyes off the ball, looks like, right there. Absolutely. Taylor looks to the sideline. They need a second and 20 play. They've thrown the ball a lot this ball game, though. They, they really have. It's, it's been a lot of the arm of Taylor, and they've lived and died by his accuracy or inaccuracy, and just enough to have a 10-point lead, but they misfired a little bit. So far, he's looked sharp in his first two passes. Tied in in motion yet again. It's going to be a handoff this time. It is Green. Green looks good, man. Green hit at the 40 and falls forward to about the 42. Yeah, give him 12 yards. He got a, that... Bobble snap, yardage back. Just following those big linemen, running running to daylight. I mean, you're looking up there leading Russia, and he's actually leading the team in receptions. 5'9", 175. He brings all that now. He's running pretty physical. He's only going to get bigger, man. Again, he's a 10th grader. He's going to get bigger and stronger. Third and eight. River Bluff defense trying to get off the field right here. Two wide receiver set once again. Taylor looks right. He has the back. He's going to throw it. To Green. Green reaches up, pulls it down, gets the first down. Look at those feet. Oh, he gave him a sweet feet move right there at midfield. Got ahead seven more yards after the sticks. So that's going to be a big play on third and eight. Got about 15. This this player is right here is just like a run out of the backfield. Anytime you swing it out like that, just get him in the open and let him do his thing. Well, that, boy got some, that boy got good feet on him now. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he like a dancer for sure. The late Gregory Hines come to mind. West Shore home first down for Dutch Fork. They're coming downhill now just across midfield. Ball's at the 40. But at the 43-yard line, just past the logo, the GN Gator. Empty backfield, throw to the right. Antonio Williams with yet another catch. They give him a lot of cushion over there. I know you said they're playing some soft, some zone. There's a little soft zone on that side. And Taylor now seems to have a better rhythm, Leo. Absolutely. He's uh, he's moving this thing down the field. Give him five on that. They seem to be much more. See, I got a feeling the conversation was a little bit about the throwing and the timing of those pass plays in a, at halftime locker room. Call it second and five. Only two wide receiver sets. And again, two tight end formation. 
One of the tight ends is in motion. Snap a little high. Give the green. Green comes left. S snag down. That was a good first down saving tackle. He had a little daylight and somebody reached up and pulled him down. Let's see. Let's look who made this tackle. Preston Sansoni, you know, yep. just makes a great play right here by grabbing him back down there. This guy is, he's getting ready to get loose. Sansoni looks like he hurt his back. He still has his hands on his back. He, he grabbed his back after the tackle. He's still grabbing his back because they line up on the defense this play. Watch Sansoni, 17. He might have hurt himself on that tackle. Third and two. Chance for a big stop for River Bluff once again right here. Two receivers to the left of the formation. Jarvis Green in the backfield. He'll get the handoff, and he gets daylight. Jarvis Green in the secondary. Jarvis Green. Matter of fact, Jarvis Green might have been hit by Green that time. West, Uriah West, West hit Green, and he fell forward. Again, he always falls forward, Leo. Always. Great vision, great speed, and this guy is uh, hes going to be uh, tough for them to deal with this half. Ball's on the 23-yard line. It'll be first and 10 from right there. That was a West Shore Holmes first down once again for the Dutch Fort Silver Foxes. You're four-time defending 5A football champions on the move. There's a back in the backfield that swung out wide right there. And he catches that pay. Breaking tackles. Oh, my God. This is Get a name of that moving train right there. That is number 25, Marcus Taylor, a junior running back. Take a look. He was in motion, and he caught it. Yes, sir. Like they, like I said again, they're just setting it up. It's just like a run when you throw it like that and let those guys get on the field and, and do what they do best. I want you to explain how they set up in a minute. It's a wildcat formation. Elijah Spencer was taking a snap. He went over his head. He falls on it. He did not fall on it. He fell past the ball. River Bluff recovers that football. Bad snap. Spencer fell over the ball. Sansoni. I thought he was banged up a few plays ago. Playing a heck of a ball game as a senior. Watch this play. Oh, man, this is the second bad snap they had on this uh, drive. Spencer, and they don't, they don't get that one back. So. Spencer slid past the football right there, and Sansoni was pursuing. When you follow the football, good things happen. Yes, they got a break uh, right before half. That's Fork did, so that was River Buffs time. Yeah, it was good for the Goose. It's good for the Gander. And out back comes River Bluff now with a little extra bounce in their step. First and 10 from the 27-yard line. Jackson Stone in a quarterback the whole way. Multi-year starter. 6'2", 190. Timeout is going to be called. And the Gators are going to call a timeout. That could be big, though. They may need these timeouts later. It's an early timeout. 6.54 to play in the third quarter. Leomont Evans, Stacey Huff here with you. The Sonic Friday Night Rivals. High School Football Game of the Week. 17-7. Dutch Fork over River Bluff. And we are back live in Lexington, South Carolina, River Bluff High School campus, the Swamp. Coming up. Coming up at the end of the game, or late in the fourth quarter, we're named our Geico player of the game. Brought to you by your Geico local office. 15 minutes can save you on your auto insurance. 15 minutes or less. So stay tuned for that. We got some people announcing themselves as possible candidates. Early in the ball game. First down and 10 for the Gators coming out of the timeout. Out of the timeout, River Bluff will snap it from the 27. That's a, that's a lateral, it's caught. Riley Myers loses, going to use two, lose two yards on that play. That's Trace Danley once again on the tackle. He's been all over the place. You like that kid, Danley, right? I love him. He, <laughs> that was a head hunters and uh, some good defensive backs. But they come from good stock. Stacy Danley, we mentioned earlier, the dad played at tailback at Auburn back in the day. He played in the NFL several years. The Danley boy end up in Columbia, South Carolina. How about that? From Auburn to the NFL to the Irmo side of town, the Lexington side of town. So, oh, there's movement. They didn't call it. That was movement by River Bluff. Jackson Stone looked like a busted play. Stone had nowhere to go. He loses another couple of yards on the play, and that's good penetration by that man again. We like him a lot, too, the sophomore Chandler 
Perry, 5'9", 185. They're like, they're like a, uh, maybe a busted play that time. Yeah, it looked like it, it was because it looked like he had to eat it. He had to eat that way. Eat dirt. Somebody got to eat dirt, right? <laughs> In this case, eat that turf. What do they call that? That turf everybody put on the field now? <laughs> field turf. That field turf. Eat field turf. Third and 13 behind the sticks are the Gators. I'm going to look to the sideline for the play. Signal land by the OC. Dutch Fork has got a success flushing Stone out of the pocket. And this time, that's going to be a pre-snap penalty. Might have been some motion. Delay a game. They actually let the play clock expire that time. Third and 13 becomes third and 18, Leomont. Can't shoot yourself in the foot. Third and 18, 5, 22 left in the third quarter. A lot of football left to play. We have a two-score ball game. Judge Fork has not been sharp tonight. River Bluff has played themselves an exceptional game, especially on defense. Stone, the run, it was a miscommunication again. The wide receiver was blocking, and the, the pass was intended for the pass was intended for number one right on your screen, EJ Dunn, but he was blocking. Take a look. He was blocking, wasn't he, Leo? He was blocking. It definitely had to be a miscommunication. They were going to him, and he, yeah, he started blocking. He thought, it was a running, he thought it was a running play. So that's going to be fourth and 18, not what you want. Styles is going to kick from the inside of his own five-yard line. Again, not ideal. Braden Styles flag down. They roughed him, I believe. Yeah. The ball went out of bounds around midfield, but that was a flag right at the kicker, and it's going to be roughing the kicker. And I do believe it's 18 yards worth, though. Is it, I don't know if it's an automatic first down. We got to find that out. Remember, it was fourth and 18. Yes. If it's not is. an automatic first down, even if it's a 15-yard penalty, it's still fourth down. It's a big, big one. Yeah, this is one big where I need to dust out the rule book right here. And, and you know what? He didn't. I don't know if he hit him. <laughs> we saw that replay. Try, hey, I, I rarely ask for a replay, but if we can see that again, I don't know if he touched him. I think he went under his leg. I think he went under his leg. I don't know if he touched him. Oh, it was a, it was a penalty. Offset okay, penalties. The, the offsetting penalties. Illegal shift on River Bluff and a rough in the kicker. I don't know that he hit the kicker. I, it didn't look like it to me. <laughs> I think he went under his leg. He sold it, though. But one he thing one thing about Dutch Fork, they just, they've been getting out the River Bluff special team all night long. They've been getting on them, right? That's that's all one night. that's one of those, you know, three phases of the game, right? Offense, defense, and special team. And, you know, all teams try to steal some some momentum in that third area of special teams. And Dutch Fork, remember the muff punt? They, they blocked one. One was muffed. And they've gotten a field goal. So Dutch Fork's special teams has played well. Braden Styles, this says Zach Ross on our screen right there, but our roster says Braden Styles, number 27. So it's one of those two. Kicker, punter. And it's going to be caught this time by Antonio Williams. He has a rule. He has some room up the middle right here. What a punt return down to the 26 yard line of River Bluff. That's a big play. That was a big play. This, yeah, well, you know, this guy, he, he's been making big plays all night, and there's one on special teams, and he's been receiving the ball. He just kind of froze the defender right there. Oh, man, look at this guy make these moves. Just got great vision running the football. Let's get some love to a tackler right now. One of the tacklers on that play was Zane Derrick, one of the captains for River Bluff. Zane Derrick, number 58, made the tackle. That's Williams on your screen. They're back to the three wide receiver set now. Will Taylor. At QB and Jarvis Green to his right, a tailback, and Green is going to get the carry. Cuts up the middle, has daylight to the second there. Jarvis Green is sneaky fast, and he reads his block very well for a young running back. Jarvis Green is an excellent tailback. You know, coming into this game tonight, he had three rushing touchdowns. And look at the vision and the cutting ability on this guy. He doesn't go down easy. And he got a first down on that. That's a West Shore Holmes first down, and then the Popowski and Shirley red zone, all that for Jarvis Green. He did two things right there. West Shore Holmes and Popowski and Shirley brought in a play right there. First and 10 from the 15, high snap. Green once again picks his way. This time, River Bluff has a team meeting. Four or five black jerseys. Green gets not a nuka. They shut that down like the fire marshal out of frat house party. 
That's the way I like to see a defensive line play in front of me too, man, where where they just change the line of scrimmage and just don't give him anything keep your, up. Keep your uniform clean in that case. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have some good ones back in the day at Clemson. Y'all had a lot of big boys up there. Hey, we still got them. They still got them, no doubt. Four minutes, nine seconds in the third quarter. Dutch Fork in the red zone. Taylor's going to run it himself this time. Cuts up the middle. Oh, good hit that time. That was Molnar. That was Molnar. Adam Molnar, the senior captain, three-year starter with a nice low tackle right here. Look at the linebacker play right here. Molnar is all over the field. Fights off a block. Makes a uh, perfect form tackle. Molnar is getting small college interest. He'll play somewhere on Saturdays. He's too good a football player not to. But he'll play somewhere on Saturdays. Winget has shown some interest in him. That's one, one of the schools, Winget, has shown some interest. And Dutch Fork's going to call a timeout to talk about it. And we're going to step away with him. Stacy Huff here with my good buddy and golfing partner, Leomont Evans. Comes to Tiger fans, remember that name. 17-7, Sonny Friday Night Rivals, high school football game of the week. Stay with us. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. So go vote! Sponsored by Jamie Harrison for Senate. The door to the American dream opens through education. Jamie Harrison is running to open those doors for all South Carolinians. Welcome back. 17-7. Dutch Fork leaves River Bluff late in the third quarter. 323 play the third quarter. Let's talk about our Smile Cam, Simply Smile Family Dentistry Smile Cam, Simply Smile Family Dentistry, our family caring for yours. Look at that. They're happy. It's Friday night. No school tomorrow. It's a close ball game. Nice evening. And Leomont Evans also is a, is a patient of Simply Smile Family Dentistry. Small world, huh? Very small world. I want to give a thanks to Dr. Daly. Okay. You call him by name. He knows him by yes. name over there. That's right. Good yeah. shout out. They got to love that. The PA guy here is on 12. He's bringing, the <laughs> energy. He's bringing the energy. It is now third down. Big third down for River Bluff's defense. Taylor, flank a screen, blown up. Blown up that time. Let's get a number. Let's get a number. That might be our guy. That's 56. Uriah West in on the tackle. Also, number 56. We don't have a 56 on our roster. Okay. Take a look right here. It's a flank a screen. Devin Hyatt was, he, the, was, the, was the, called it, and West was the first man there. He read it and blew it up. That's crazy. That is a, the way he shot through there. Actually, that's Craig Williams. Give Craig Williams some love. Craig Williams, 5'11", a junior. Craig Williams blew that play up. It's almost like they knew the play. That's good coaching. Absolutely. On for that short field goal for him is Unlada Skirin. And it barely got over. Unlada Skirin, his second field goal of the ball game, gives Dutch Fork a 20 to 7 lead. Good job by River Bluff's defense. But they got three out of that. 238 to play in the third quarter. We'll stay right here. After that scores, we get ready for our Willingham and Sons kickoff. But so far, River Bluff staying within shouting distance. The offense has to wake up, though. They've not scored tonight. Absolutely. You know, it's a good thing that they only gave up three points on that drive. So the Gators, you know, they uh, they bent, but they didn't break. So they just have to keep playing. They have to keep playing. It's a four-quarter game. Got to keep playing. One big play can ignite the River Bluff offense, though. They need a play. They need something kind of like Kendall Long gave them early in the ball game. They also had – Dutch Fork had that kind of a flukish type score at the end of the half. River Bluff needs a break on offense. Definitely. Definitely. Well, you know, it, it can happen for both sides. They need to, you know, art, articulate the ball down the field. They need to get something going right now. It's going to be a, I think it's going to be a very interesting drive as we get into the fourth quarter in a few moments to see if River Bluff, you know, uh, you know takes to the air more. They've been pretty patient. This is Willingham and Sons kickoff coming up. Willingham and Sons building supply and septic tanks. Jackson Stone has actually had some success running the football himself. So getting him on the edge with a run pass option might be something they'll look at. I'm not, I never try to be an OC, but he's been a pretty solid player for him for a number of years. 
They might put the game in his hands. Oh, nice run. Nice return. Good patience behind the blocks that time. That looks like that was our guy again. Thomas Powell, Thomas Powell who's been the kickoff returner all night, gets to the 30-yard line. He gets up, hobbled. That's him on your screen right there. He's limping. He's going to try to run it off. That was a good return that time. He get, set his team up pretty well. So, so yeah, they'll tend to him on the sideline. Thomas Powell's a sophomore. He's a good-looking sophomore now. 5'11", 185, got good size, he'll get bigger, stronger, and he's definitely been mixing it up on defense as well as on special teams. And Sansoni is in the backfield behind Jackson Stone as well as Riley Myers. It's going to be a fake to Sansoni. Stone, Stone trying to get outside, he was tripped up. That's going to be a tackle. That, he threw the ball out there, he was down. Good tackle for Dutch Fork by number 44, Gabe Wise. Injury timeout on the field. Right here, it's just, oh, he just trips. Looked like he was uh, kind of free. If, if you never know what could happen on that play. I hope he's not banged up too much on this play. Oh, he's grabbing that leg. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to tend to him. Let's hope it's, he's in a little bit of pain. He's in pain right now. They, they, they pulling the toe back. That's a cramp. Absolutely. And that's that's good news, actually. That's, that's great news. But, you know, uh, being an athlete, the first uh, part of the season or the first few games, that happens, and it comes right. out of being anxious. And right. And, and nerves. In the pandemic time we lived in, you know, in 2020, I was tell, I've been saying on the air, you know, each of these weeks, we're getting mistakes and cramps in October that we normally get in late August. Because Absolutely. that's normally when this is, this is late, like a late August first opening night game for Real Bluff. That means cramps. That means some maybe some jitters and maybe some mistakes, but they've hung in there. But you're seeing it all um, around in every uh, sport, not only high school, That's you correct. got college and pro, because yeah. everybody didn't have a training camp. Everybody didn't have their scrimmages and right. everything else. So it makes a, a world of difference. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, even, you know, tackling, is, you can tell people haven't had a preseason and some teams, even in the, they get paid money, don't tackle as well. And it, I'm not calling the team's uh, name, but it rhymes with now boys. <laughs> and um, some people, think, you know, just it's like tackling. The fundamentals have not been attended to since the, the preseason was shortened. I didn't give anything away there, did I? Nobody can figure out who I'm talking about, I'm sure. Right? Well, I did. not did. No. 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 Now, now boys. Oh, there's a big round of applause. <laughs> okay. We may have a. Taunting, I'm sorry, it might be a taunting penalty right here. Look right, a taunting. Oh, he, oh, that might be a taunting penalty. Yeah, Riley Myers put a hand to the face mask of Wicker, and that's just took, he took the bait. They baited him. You can't do that. So it was interesting how that worked out. So the ball's gonna be placed with your quarterback out. So we got a backup quarterback in. I get the number of that. The new quarterback of Stone went out for a play. Oh, this is this is a Wildcat with Riley Myers in at quarterback. He took the shotgun snap and ran it. Second and 27 before that play. This is not what you want. Myers a tough kid, but you don't want to get behind the sticks like that with your starting quarterback out. Now it's going to bring up third. He got about three or four yards in that play. It's going to bring up third and very long. And now we bring in, I guess Myers may be the backup quarterback. It's third and 23. Got four on that play. So they're going to keep Myers in. He's in shotgun. He's going to run it left this time. And it's just white jerseys everywhere. Myers on the keeper. Gain of a couple of yards on that one as well. But it's going to be fourth down. So it's going to be punt time for River Bluff. Yeah, you hate to see that. I hope Jackson Stone is okay. We'll check with him. He's a definitely a big part of the offense. Huge. Team. <laughs> Huge. Team period. So Riley Myers is also in on the. He's at the center. Is he snapping? Riley Myers might be the, Riley Myers might be the snapper for this punt team. Styles in the kick again. From you don't want to be kicking inside your ten yard line. He's doing it again. This is a beautiful kick. Beautiful kick. He's gonna drive Antonio Williams back. Williams catches it over his shoulder. He's going to head up field. He has a wall on the right side. He might get that right sideline. He's got some room over there. It's going to be a penalty. He went out of bounds. He saw the flag. went out of bounds. That's smart of him. It, like, it was coming back. Looked like we got a block in the back. Yeah. But that's a, uh, that's a great return by Williams. I mean, this kid has been dynamic on offense and special teams. Sneaky. Just sneaky yards, Leo. I mean, as long as he's getting 10, he gets 20. 
I mean, right. Jarvis Green the same way, running the ball. He's just that strong and finishing runs. But 27, River Bluff still very much in play here with 33 seconds left to play in the third quarter. So that's going to mark Judge Fork back a little bit. But even with that said, they're going to have great field position. Absolutely. And uh, that's that's the thing, you know, here's, here's another special teams play. You're right. Special teams has been, you know, that penalty hurt them that time, but they, the, the return itself after a great kick, by the way. I mean, Styles got unloaded one on him. That's Coach Tom Knox laying down the low over there in this huddle. That was one of the best punts they had tonight, and, you know. So the fans beneath us right here trying to inspire their defense. Ball across midfield for Dutch Fork going right to left on your TV. Jarvis Green with the handoff. Goes around the right side and pulled down by his jersey that time. Green pulled down from behind. Let's see who made that tackle. That's number 15 for River Bluff. That's Kevin Coclasier, 5'11", 185-pound senior. Coclasier shows some strength. Jarvis Green's got a lot of work in the second half now. Second and seven. Fake to Green. Taylor wanted to go up top. Has a man, Antonio Williams. Oh, he was about to, he was about to get okie doke. He was about to get somebody to okie doke right now. He was about to get the stanky leg. Yes. He, he just, this this, lost this, his footing, this but young man right here got some moves. I love to see him in the uh, open field. He can play tag in a phone booth. That's going to be a first down. West Shore Holmes first down. He's heading to the fourth quarter. We're going to step away. Your score after three chapters of a four-chapter book. Duck Fork, Silver Fox is 20. River Bluff Gators, 7. Stay with us. Welcome back into the Swamp 27. Just go. I see some Clemson Tiger fans in the stands right here. That's some of Leo Mott's people. I think y'all all rolled together over here, right? Yeah. Back, oh, to, yeah. back to live action. Will Taylor, high <laughs> step. Jarvis Green, left side. He's going to bounce it outside. This kid is smooth. Got hit around, the, got tackled up around the helmet by Wyatt Proctor. Good tackle. It was legal. But good run by Green, man. He does a good job getting behind those blockers. To tell you the truth, they just haven't had an answer for him all night, and this guy runs hard. Oh, there's some yellow on the green right there. Never a good mix for me. Yellow on green, and it's going to be it's going to be a delay of it looked like the delay of game sign, but that was – that would have stopped the play. Like a block in the back. Let me see that gesture again. I thought – it looked like he did a delay of game it's signal down, but it was a bl block in the back is going to be the call. I don't know if I quite caught the gesture, but they're going to walk it back. It's from the spot of the foul, so the ball's going to be placed at the 38-yard line of River Bluff. So instead of, instead of second and one, it'll be first and 17, Lil. The drum line, where's Nick Cannon? There's Nick Cannon, drum line. <laughs> Tight ends in motion yet again. Jarvis Green up the middle, runs into his own lineman. Oh, wow. He ran to big 320 pound Holloman. Cole Clasier makes the tackle for River Bluff, little high snap. His green running through there. He'd have been in the daylight. He ran right into that big, that big man right there. That's it, a mountain of a man. Hard, it's hard to get around him. He's a detour. He does I'm a detour sign you. around him. I'm telling you. He's a big fella. But green has played himself a game. His yards are starting to add up. Outstanding young tailback. Devin Hyatt has offers from many major schools. But at the bottom of your screen, green again. Green in daylight, Jarvis Green, it's a foot race, and he wins, he breaks the tape. Jarvis Green, touchdown, touchdown, Dutch Fork, and strike up the Silver Fox fight song with the sonic touchdown by sophomore Jarvis Green. Jarvis Green has played a tremendous game tonight. You know, they, they don't have an answer for him. Here, he just sees daylight, and when he hits the outside, watch the speed, he just runs away from him. He just, just he, he broke the tape, man. He just he put in another gear, he downshifted. The cherry line made, don't make me stop on the way home now, because I will do it. Cherry Lime is calling me. 26-7 is your score. 
Extra point, dead, solid, perfect by Furkan Unludeskiren for Dutch Fork. 20 point lead now, they're widening the margin. Leo Mott, Evan, Stacey Hoff, and you on a nice Friday night. Dutch Fork in control, stay with us. Welcome back inside the party known as the FNR Game of the Week. Of course, coming up in the fourth quarter, later in the fourth quarter, we'll announce our GEICO player of the game. Brought to you by your, your local GEICO office. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Having a grand old time here in Lexington, South CAC, the campus of River Bluff High School. They call this place the Swamp. Hard off exit 61 I-20 West. Dutch Fork will kick. They'll left the right on your TV screen dressed in all whites. After Labor Day, we won't let them get away with it. On the right, going right to left, River Bluff High School. This is our Willingham and Sons building supply and septic tanks kickoff. Look at that camera work. Look at that camera work. Our crew push you right on the field. Get your pads. Put your pads on when you watch the games on Friday Night Rivals. We're coming right at you. Get ready to catch this. Short kick, fielded at the 11-yard line. That's going to be Powell. Powell with some room. He tries to bounce it outside. Good return. He's been solid all night in that. It's number nine, Powell, Thomas Powell, the junior. I'm sorry, he's a sophomore. 10-51, Leo, it's getting late. It, it is, and it's time for these guys to, you know, Put my, some points on the board. Get the ball down the field. My grandfather was a Baptist minister. He used to sing a song saying it's getting late in the evening and the sun is going down. River Bluff tried to keep himself from going down on this senior night, trying to pull the upset. They were in the top ten as before last week. They tumbled out, but they've been around the top ten preseason and with expectation. They just haven't played until tonight. Playing against a tough ask, nationally ranked Dutch Fork. And this time, Stone Jackson over. Stone keeps it for about two yards at some point, Leo. I keep saying they're going to have to take to the air. Definitely. they. I think they've held this ball on the ground too too long. I mean, it's getting late in the game. You need points, so you're going to have to put it up in the air. So look at number 10 on your screen. Made that tackle right there. He's been busy tonight. Jaden Kennard. Jaden Kynard. Let me double check that. But ball's at the 42-yard line. Second and eight. Th two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Raleigh Myers with a good run that time. He's going to have a first down. Myers on the carry. Check that. He got to the stick. Depends on the mark. I thought I thought it was the 50. He had to get to the 49. So it's going to be a yard short, I do believe. It's going to bring up third and one. My Myers get the ball. Get behind that block. And, and he carries about three or four people with him. Yeah, I, I misread the change that time. I thought he had to get to midfield. It's the 49. They need one more yard. Third and a long one. And they're going to try to sneak it. Don't know if he got it. The ball, look, the ball was a little loose in there for a minute. Looked like he may have with the second effort. Yeah, they, they, I think they were trying to pull it out. To, he may have got it. They're going to mark it right at the stick. I think they're going to give him the first down right here. And he says, yeah, go on, give it to me, man. <laughs> Remember, he went out the game early with a cramp, so good to see Jackson Stone back in there. So that is a West Shore Holmes first down for the Gators of River Bluff High School. Once again, as I mentioned, it is senior night. A lot of schools are doing that early in the season this year because of the uncertainty. That's the truth. And it's a shortened season anyway because of uncertainty. So right. a lot of people are doing their senior nights and some are doing homecoming all in the first few weeks of play. So first and 10 now from just across midfield. River Bluff needs to score quick, fast, and in a hurry. Stone is going to run up the middle, bounces out to the left, caught the ball back, and he fumbled it. He drew the ball back to throw it, and it came out. It's going to be recovered by Uwusu, Ed Uwusu. For Dutch Fork, because of that, and Stone tried to do a little too much. Take a look. Yeah, on this play, you know, he gets away right here. Just take the sack, uh, put the ball down. You got to protect the football. That was, you know, one of the keys of the game. And the man you that know. hit him, not the ball out, excuse me, Leo, was number 33. Darius Cohen Chisholm hit him and stripped that ball out of there. But he just separated the ball. He broke his hands. And when he brought it back in, Edward Awusu got on it. But Cohen Chisholm caused the fumble. Wusu has been an active kid for years. We've done, a, you know, their games, their championship game on TV there, and I'm always calling his name, Ed Owusu. 
very active player, 6'2", 220, a senior defensive end. Will Taylor looks left, has a man. That is, he might have been down. They're going to call him down. They're going to rule him down on that plate. It's bang, bang, Leo. They're going to rule him down by contact before the fumble. And I think that was Spence. Let's see who the receiver was. That's our guy, Antonio Williams, again. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's pretty I don't close. Know. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, we got an extra slow-mo, super slow-mo. That right leg was probably down. That right leg was probably down. That's, that's a good call. That right knee looks like it might have been down. Good job in the truck, guys. Great shot. And this could be a handoff. Jarvis Green got blasted. Ooh. Got his helmet knocked off. Yeah, physical hit that time by the Real Bluff front. That's Molnar again, making the play. Molnar's. Yeah, Molnar's out there handing out punishment. 8.28 to play with a rolling clock. Dutch Fork in the Popowski and Shirley red zone. Once again, they've been there quite a few times tonight. Up by 20. That's Will Taylor on your screen. The Clemson commit, baseball first, and then football came in with an offer just a few weeks ago. He's going to look right. He has a man. One-on-one -on -one coverage. It's Elijah Spencer. Great job with a back shoulder throw. Good catch. Touchdown, Dutch Fort. Touchdown, Dutch Fort. Touchdown, Elijah Spencer. Strike okay, up the Silver Fox Elijah fight Spencer. song at the Sonic Touchdown. This is something on this play right here. You know, Taylor right here hits him on the back shoulder fade. That's, that's, a, that's a brutal, that's the most unfair thing they ever did to defensive back since they made pass interference uh, calls so ticky-tack. The back shoulder fade is evil for defensive backs. It's like the kryptonite. And it is, man, because you can have great coverage and give it up. Look at the, got a little hot dog with a little extra, extra fillings on it right there, a little cherry limeade. Extra point attempt is And extra point is up and good by Furkan Unludeskiran. Stepping away, taking a break right here. 34-7, Dutch Fork over River Bluff. It's the Sonic Friday Night Rivals game of the week. Fourth quarter action. Welcome back inside of the Sonic Friday Night Rivals game of the week. My name is Stacy Huff, along with former Clemson Tiger from a Washington football team with no name player, from a Houston Texan, Leomont Evans, my guy. My friend and brother, good to have you up here with us, Leo Mine. And it's been a quite a game. Dutch Fork started slow and later than some people thought, they've now pushed this lead out to 27 points. Absolutely. They've been going to um, Green. Green has been the man tonight. And um, also, you know, Williams has had a good game. Yeah, Will Taylor settled down the second half. Throws a little different. That back shoulder fade was a, that's a talent right there. That takes, you know, not every quarterback can perfect that. And Spencer's a great athlete, great athlete as well. He's going to play college. D1 football as well. And this ball is going to bounce. It's going to check up. It's not going out of bounds. They were trying to, they thought it was going out of bounds. You got to feel the kickoff. They finally picked it up. And that was Sansoni. He assumed the ball was going out of bounds and it checked up like a golf, like a little pitching wedge. And did not, he did the right thing picking it up. If he didn't let it bounce one more time, Dutch Fort would have been on that football. So they're going to have bad field position, but it could have been worse. That's Sansoni right there, the senior. I think he made a pretty heady play right there at the end after he and the other return man assumed incorrectly. First and 10 from the 10-yard line. Seven fifty-five to play. Two backs behind Stone. Low snap. They've had problems with snaps tonight. He's going to pitch left. And that's going to be Riley Myers. Riley Myers with a lot of room that time. And Let's get 55 some love on that taco right there. That was DJ Harden, the senior linebacker. They give it to Myers right here. Gets outside. He cuts it back inside. Runs hard. Takes about two guys to get him down. Picks up a first down. Yes, that is a West Shore Holmes first down. West Shore Holmes, our second half first down sponsor. We appreciate them. And 725 on the rolling fourth quarter clock. Low snap again, this time given to Raleigh Myers. He's had a heavy workload. He's going to sleep well tonight. Myers on the carry. And that tackle that time Down by, this is like number 90, the first man there, Rodney Shell, senior. 
Number 90 right there on your screen. Good job. And second down and seven. Bring up second down. We get call it seven yards to go. They're in no hurry, though. They're not throwing the ball. They're still running with seven to play down three scores. Actually, four scores. Inside handoff again. Mai's on the run again, but, you know, Clock is winding down. I'm not so, sure. You yeah, know, you need not, to put some points on the board. You're going to have to throw the ball. Yeah, no, no sense of urgency, but it will be third down, and let's call it four. Looks like it might have been 18 on the time. We got some backups in for Dutch Fork now. Nick Wright in the ball game. I think we got some backups in. Let's get those backups some love, some players who maybe hadn't played as much in the ball game. Coach Tom Knott's working in some, get some experience with some players. 6-18 on the game clock. Stone throws that time. Oh, he had a man. Had that been caught, he had some room. He would have had to split the defenders. That was Jacob Hutto, 5'11", senior. Take a look. Oh, so close. You got to catch that guy. I think he might have heard footsteps coming from across the field. I think he might have a little, little sixth sense. I'm seeing ghosts. Uh, punt time. Punt time for River Bluff. They're going to give it back to Dutch Fork. Let's see how conservative Dutch Fork is with a 27-point lead at this time. So, yeah, it's actually a four-score ball game now. River Bluff was in no urgency at all on that. It's a fair catch call by fair Antonio Williams on the 37-yard line. So that's what, that's what they'll take over. With six minutes left to play. Six oh six. We'll see if they bring in some. I see Will Taylor is going to come back out. We'll see if they have any backups in for Dutch Fork. No, it's a starting unit. Antonio Williams, Elijah Spencer, Reed in a tight end, Jarvis Green a tailback, Will Taylor at quarterback. Let's see if Jarvis Green gets a little bit more work here. He's really been something to watch tonight. He really has. Impressive sophomore, man. I, I've been hearing about this kid since he was like 7th, 8th grade, and the things I've heard have all been true on basketball and football. I had one guy from this side of town, I rely on information, told me about a year ago that football is going to be a sport. Then another guy told me basketball is going to be a sport. When that happens, that means he's, he's definitely good at both. He's definitely great like, athlete. Yeah, they were like, he'll go to, he can go to college playing either. But definitely, I love him in football thus far. Taylor's going deep. They want more points. And he has. He underthrew him. He had Williams. He went up a high point of that. Would you, are you kidding me? Antonio Williams, are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Antonio Williams, have yourself a night, young man. <laughs> touchdown, Williams. Touchdown, Dutch Fork. Strike up the Silver Fox fight song. They haven't slowed him down all night. It's the Antonio Williams show. Welcome in. Unbelievable catch. Unbelievable. Antonio Williams on the touchdown reception. Listen, man. You know, I'm a Gamecock. Anthony Smith played tailback on the Black Magic team at USC. Told me before the game at the parking lot, he said, watch Antonio Williams. He and sure Moss. enough, he nailed it. Antonio he, Williams the guy to watch. He got mossed. He got mossed. That's right. You got mossed. Oh, Williams. Look at that hot dog. See, look at that. Look at that. A little relish, a little chili, ketchup, mustard, whatever. And an extra point. After the touchdown, the score. I didn't see the extra point. It was good by Furkan Unluda Skirin. He's had himself a night as well. So it should be 41-7. Dutch Fork, 5.53 left to play. And they wanted more points. Tom Knotts showing, showing no mercy. Oh, Look at that catch. That's beautiful. That's just beautiful. That right there will get you a ticket on Saturdays. He'll play on Saturday. Yeah, that, yeah, you're right. That'll get you some free education. Free, free, room, free room and board. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No question. Amazing. What a play. It's been a tough night for defensive backs in some ways. That's your, that's your guys, man. I know. They started out good. But, um, you know, Dutch Fork has had their way. Williams got, got started. And it was less his show. Man, this guy, this kid, really, man, I mean, they already had Elijah Spencer. They had Devin. Devin Hyatt probably holds 10 D1 offers as a sophomore, including Tennessee, I think, where his brother's playing. Elijah Spencer has a D1 offer to Charlotte. And now you have Antonio Williams. Coach Knotts, there he is right there. He has an embarrassment of riches at the receiver position. 
Absolutely. And ta Will Taylor at the trigger. Arm is a little erratic tonight, but when he settles down, they're going to play a lot of pitch and catch. And then you can add Jarvis Green as that sophomore tailback. Yes. Just this team is loaded. Kick is going to be short. Bobbled again. They've had trouble. And this is going to be our guy Powell, I do believe. Hit hard. And Dragon player still playing hard. Kicks out. You got to, you can't assume a player's going down. Finally corralled by Jaden Kynard. And Powell just did not want to give up on the play. Powell was determined when he um, got that ball. But you know, he's been doing some great things um, all night. Guy ran hard, ran that ball real hard. Very impressive. Very impressive. River Bluff takes over at the 49 yard line. Are they going to play conservative again? They have a new running back in the ball game. They bring some backups in. That's number 26, Benny Liu, 5'10, 180, and a junior. No relation to Tyron Liu, the NBA coach. And that's going to be Liu on the carry, I do believe. Myers on the carry. No, that's Myers. Raleigh Myers gets another catch. Another carry. Myers has been so active tonight. Myers has done it all. Yeah, he has, man. The young man plays hard. We saw him last year on our airwaves over at Dutch Fork in the same game. Again, it was a losing cause, but he and Brayden Walker both took a beating that night at the running back spots, and he kept coming back for more, kept running hard throughout the game. And he just has admire that he has his right hand bandaged up. It's a cast, soft cast on that right hand and wrist. So he's been playing banged up. Second and seven, it was three yards on that play. Rolling clock at 4.55 now. Somebody moved early. They're not going to call it, though. Jackson Stone pitches. That's Riley Myers again, and he gets, oh. man, listen, he gets slammed down, snap, crackle, pop. He was by, by five guys. By several. <laughs> they had a little team meeting over there. Some new players in the ball game. I see 34 in the ball game for Dutch Ford. That's Look like Marquise Richardson. Stone's down again. Stone is down again. That's going to be cramps again. This time it's the left leg. I think it was the right leg before. Early season cramping, we see that. Yeah, but he's at, he's at, ran the ball a great deal tonight, too. Yes. He yes. had to put a lot on him. Never thought we'd have a time when I'd be in October talking about early season cramps. But we are talking about early season. This is their first game of the season. I talked about it in the opener of our very first game. It was Heathwood Hall versus Ben Lippin. Delayed but not denied. We're glad to have high school football. Even though it's delayed, we're glad to have it. A, at some point, it was talked about not even having it. Glad to have these youngsters out here playing. We hope everybody's safe, using all the yes. protocols and precautions so we can finish the season. That's the main thing. You know, uh, we just have to uh, do the right things and listen. Everybody be safe. We're just happy to have football going on right now, so we're going to do everything we can to uh, keep it going on. That's by being safe and taking care of each other. With no question. You see them working out that cramp, Jackson Stone, and he went out before and came back in, and you know, like, who's ever had cramps? You know, they could be some bad boys to deal with now. And once you get one, they keep coming. They don't, they don't, just, they don't stop. They don't stop. Yeah. So they were taking a knee. That, that was nice. The cheerleaders took a knee in, out of respect for the injury. Although cramps on the lower end of the injury spectrum, they can the person having them don't think it's lower end. It hurts. So Dutch Fork working in some younger players on defense, I'm noticing now. 435 to play in the ball game. It's going to be won by Dutch Fork. They'll go to 3-0 and in the region and on the season. New quarterback in, and the snap is mishandled. There's a new quarterback in the ball game for River Bluff. Fumble on the play, ball down at the Gator 40 yard line. Trying to get the, the name. Colin, Colin Crocker, number 29, is in at quarterback. Fourth down and long for the Gators. Now comes the punt team. Crocker's a junior, 5'9, 150. Punt team comes on for River Bluff. So they've had how many times we've seen the mishandled snaps? Um, three times with three different quarterbacks tonight. Good point. Very good point. Three different. So, so you saying maybe it's not the quarterback? I, <laughs> I, I think it's the repetition. Right. Right. Early, again, early season stuff. So in the punt is Styles. He's he's got the, the ice his leg down. He's got a lot of punts off tonight, and out of bounds, way out of bounds. Caught by a lineman from Dutch Fork who pretends to return it on the sideline. They're having fun. Yeah, pull out of bounds. That was 57 for Dutch Fork. They fielded that. And Connor Engel 
Shows a sense of humor right there. The, the guys are having fun, and listen, that's what it's all about. Absolutely. I always tell people, you know, these guys are teenagers. This is probably the best time of your life. Absolutely. And after this is done, some of them will never play again. So you you better enjoy it. Great point. Great point. And you got you to coach it that way and play it that way. Enjoy every minute of it. Every single minute of it, sir. Sometimes I, sometimes I still have dreams that I got a game tomorrow. I have a dream, as old as I am. First and 10 from the 35. It's going to be a give that time around the left side. That was Marcus Taylor, Marcus Taylor on the carry, the carry uh, junior running back. That's him right there, 25. He caught a pass earlier and had some good run. Had a good run after the catch. So the, you see it mixed a lot of these uh, young players in here, get them some uh, playing time. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons that this team is so dominant every year, when you can score points and you can get uh, the younger players in and let them play. It only makes your program and your team better. Braxton Lodge, number 36 in the ball game, a junior in the ball game as well in the backfield now. Number 36 right there to the right of Will Taylor. Engle, the guy who called that punt out of bounds, he's a center, 57. High snap. Uh -huh. Will Taylor's going to go down. He just sat on the spinning wheel that time. <laughs> he said he got to spin his you, You've seen both teams uh, have yes. problems with snapping the ball. You, you're right. Again, you mentioned early season things. 2.30 left in the ball game. Right. <laughs> the PA guy from here needs a raise. I, I'm going to go ahead and put that down. He, he give him, I don't know what he's making. He is he's working. Something. He is working. Yes. That man is working. He has a construction hat on. He is working. That's Coach Tom Knotts. Can't tell by his face who's winning, can you? Okay. Coach Knotts, <laughs> he's, 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 he's doesn't look exactly gleeful. Will Taylor with the snap. Running back kind of stumbled into the hole. Gets hit by Sansoni, the first man there, I do believe, for, for River Bluff. Also 95 in on the tackle. That's... Chikari Davis, one of the captains tonight, 6'1", 300 pounds. So fourth and 20, it'll be punt time for Dutch Fork, and they're going to take that time and let the clock, play clock probably run all the way down, and then they'll kick off to, I mean, they'll punt, excuse me, to River Bluff. No, nobody's in a hurry right now. Slick at that line. No, nobody wants to get the I-20 traffic right now. And they, and they lined up as if they were going to snap it. This four calls a timeout with 1.16 to play. We're going to stay right here with them. We have a stadium audience with us or national with us right now. And we're in the South Carolina. We, we say right here sometimes. Sometimes that's been said. <laughs> Abbeville, where Leo Mott's from, Chesterfield County, where I'm from. we both from 1A, 2A towns. Matter of fact, Abbeville and Chesterfield played in the state playoffs a couple years. When Steve Tannehill was up in Chesterfield coaching. Absolutely. Yeah. Coming up tomorrow on our airwaves, number 22 ranked Texas Longhorns in action versus Oklahoma at 12 noon. High noon for the Red River shootout. 4 p.m. following that, Kansas State, TCU. College football in full swing now. And later on tomorrow night, Clemson's playing. I don't, I don't care or say what network, but... Leo Mott's Clemson Tigers have the big one against the University of Miami. I'm going to become a Miami fan tomorrow. <laughs> I think you and the rest of the Gamecock <laughs> fans will be Miami fans tomorrow. Anybody that's playing us, you, right? You know how we do it. Yes. High snap on the kick. Wicker caught it. He's going to take his time and punt. And they're going to let it hit. This is going to be down at around the 31-yard line. It goes out of bounds. And we'll have first and 10 for River Bluff right there at that spot. First down and 10 for the Gators with just over a minute left to play. So we're about to wrap it up with the finishing touches here, and we'll name our Geico player of the game in a little bit. We'll talk to our victorious coach, and let's hope Tom Knox can hear us this time. I don't want him to think he's placing an order at a restaurant, but he can definitely have it his way once he wins by 34 after a slow start, Leo Mott. Very slow start, but, you know, that's what makes this team great. I mean... They overcame and came out the second half, played a good game. Absolutely. An explosion in the second half. It was 17-7. So, look at a 24-zip 
Second half. Second half was the Green Williams show. <laughs> yep, Green and Williams took over. Green on the ground by land. Williams by air. Will Taylor got those throws down, and they lit up the scoreboard. It's going to be a run this time up the middle. That may be our last snap of the ball game. That's going to be the last snap of the game. The play clock has 35 on it. The game clock has 28. They may not snap it again. And this year, I don't know if we do handshakes now. I don't know what they, they may wave at each other. Or they're going to snap it one more time. But this is the ball game, 41-7, third and six. They're going to snap it one more time. And, that, and that's bobble. We're in that fitting. One more bobble snap. That's something. And that's the young quarterback in there. And they'll work it out. River Bluff will show and prove that next week with no doubt. River Bluff. River Bluff. Falls to 0-1 on Thank senior you night. Thank you for attending tonight's Dutch Fort goes to 3-0 in the region and overall. Remember, Dutch Fort number one ranked 5A defending four-time champion. Score is going to be 41-7. We'll we're going to step away and put the finishing touches on it. From Lexington, South Carolina, the campus of River Bluff High School, home of the Gators in the swamp. Leo Mott Evans, Stacey Hoff, and you. Let's wrap it up. When we come back, stay with us. Welcome back in where you just saw Dutch Fort look dominant in the second half, running away from the River Bluff Gators, winning 41-7. We have our Geico local office player of the game. Geico, 15 minutes can save you money on your auto insurance. And it is Antonio Williams, our player of the game. He looked dominant. This kid came out the second half and just completely took over the ball game. I mean, he Scope. made this catch right here. That's one of the best catches I've seen in a long time right here. That, that deserves some national attention. Sports center. And that's and the one that in the first half was even better. Let's go down to Victoria's coach Tom Knotts and his four-time defending champions. Coach Knotts, what a yes. performance tonight. <laughs> Uh, we played lights out in the second half. I don't know what happened in the first half, but Tony made a big play uh, there at the end of the first half, and I think that really uh, uh, broke their backs a little bit, broke their spirit. But what, what a great individual play by Tony Tony Williams. Yes, sir. Coach, you go to 3-0 and now in the season, defending four-time champion, and what are you telling your team to keep them motivated? You haven't gotten, been beaten in the state in a long time. Well, what are you telling them each week, Coach? Well, we just approach each game, you know, just like it's the next game. We just move up, keep moving on to the next game. We demand perfection. We demand that they uh, practice hard. They do the right thing. Uh, they, I don't think they care who we play. It, you know, it doesn't matter to us. <laughs> we just come out and play play the next opponent. That, that's what I like about them. Congratulations, Coach Tom. Now, can you hold that trophy up? Let your players make a little noise right quick. <laughs> make a little noise, they said. Yeah. And, and, and Antonio Williams. Antonio Williams, the player of the game. Antonio oh, Williams. Trophy. Yeah, that trophy. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that one. There you go. Hold that trophy up. <laughs> that too, Coach That's good. Antonio Williams, the player of the game. Thank you, Coach, for your time. And we want to thank our sponsors for supporting, as always, promotion considerations to Sonic, Geico Local Office, Crosby Roofing, Love Plumbing, Air and Electrical, West Shore Homes, Palmetto Citizens Federal Credit Union, Blythewood Wildlife Removal, South Carolina Agritourism, South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control, Atkins Law Firm, Willingham & Sons, Dick Dyer Toyota, Columbia International University, Popowski & Shirley, and Simply Smiles Family Dentistry. And at this particular time, I want to tell you all that we have exciting things coming up for you. And on behalf of Leomont Evans, my broadcast partner tonight, K Powers in the truck, Sean Williams, and my name is Stacey Huff saying check us out next week, Richard Northeast at Drear. Thank y'all for joining us tonight. Have a great evening. You see how to get a copy of the game. We had a great time. Catch us next week, Sonic Friday Night Rivals. Game of the week. Next week, Richard Northeast at Drear. Have a good night, everybody.